Hey everybody and welcome back to Ready Steady Play. I'm so excited to see you all here for Alter Quest! Yes, it's been requested. It was asked about. So I asked Blacklist Games for a review copy and they said there's none left. And I said, well, is it going to come to retail? And they were like, no. Maybe, we don't know. So, I got a copy on the secondhand market and now I'm going to show it to you. And you can't buy it. So, heads up, if you like what you see, you're just going to have to either join me for the rest of the adventure or go out and find a copy from someone who's done with it. But, you never know. There might be a lot of people... I'm just checking out chat there. That's the funny eyes. There might be a lot of people who are done with it because either they finished all the story stuff and they didn't want to play the other parts or they didn't like it. So, we're going to find out, is it any good? And also... What about the stuff that's the story parts or not the story parts? You see, Alter Quest was a big fantasy game Kickstarter. It is a dungeon crawler, as you can see from this map over here on the um, table camera. We got our, our map set up. Does this look like Hero Quest? Is that a coincidence that this looks like Hero Quest and the game is called Alter Quest? I don't think so. But does it play anything like Hero Quest? No. This is designed by the Sadler brothers, who designed their modular game systems, and this uses the same modular game system. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. But right now, let me just say, hey chat, Dustin, so glad you could join us, mate. Ages since I've seen you live. And Heggers is here, Nero DCS. Yeah, um, I don't have the sun today. I've actually, this is actually better than it has been recently, because I changed the background to the game collection, uh, because I re-engineered my room a bit, and um, now... What's happened is there's a huge amount of reflection off of the board games. So normally I'm completely whited out. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, I have um, tried to turn the lights down a bit today, but they're still way too bright on me and probably a little too dark on the table. So this is going to be an ongoing project i feel possibly they need to i don't know i'll figure it out uh, off camera but uh, yes how very ostentatious of me to put the board game collection in the background um we all have to admit though it's better than the weird white void wall i had before so <laughs> it's uh dustin i actually this is not a good haircut this is not a good look for me um <laughs> i just didn't i haven't done anything with it today I've been working all day and now I'm live streaming. I meant to live stream yesterday. How's that? Is that better? I meant to live stream uh, yesterday, you see, and um, I didn't get a chance to because I was too busy playing Alter Quest for the second time. So I played uh, two. Um, I played through two. Nero, if I really wanted to flex, I'd put all the out of print games on the shelf behind me instead of, you know, whatever was there. <laughs> but. Uh, the, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so Alter Quest basically can be played in three ways. You can play either one-off adventure modes, or you can play a campaign, which is six linked adventures, sort of loosely linked by upgrading your character and your enemies, rather than anything else. And then you can play the story mode. It kind of comes with some story manuals that provide linked adventures that also come together to form a narrative. And uh, you can try and decide where... Oh, I'm sorry, guys, if you were waiting for the stream yesterday. I know, I, I really wanted to stream yesterday, but it just got later and later, and I was like, I want to bring my best, my best me to the stream. And also, I want to be able to... I thought, I was worried that if I didn't do Alter Quest now, I don't know if we'd get it done um, again. I don't want to keep putting it off, but it's a, it is it is a tricky game. There's... um. There's 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 lots of uh, there's not a lot of rules, but the rules there are quite particular. And then there's a lot of cards with exceptions on them. So I would describe it as a um, a game that's quite particular, with lots of little little bits going on uh, to it. Um, so I did want to make sure that I got this uh, uh, as down as I could, but the reason you don't see it uh, set up, of course. Uh, prop fully is because we still have to decide what character we're going to play and I don't actually know How I'm going to set this up because I haven't looked at the story mode yet I thought we could explore this story together on camera. Let me let me explain you see 
this is designed by the Sadler brothers who've got their patented modular deck system, which they've now employed, I believe, in four games, one of which isn't out yet. But the first one was oh, Street Masters, which I played a long time ago and I quite liked when it when they did the first Kickstarter. They've done two for that now. So I like Street Masters, but Street Masters was a lot simpler than this. Um, and it was relatively easy to sort of work out. I mean, this one's more complex, although not a whole... Well, the enemy AI in this is uh, is not any more complex, but there's just a lot more sort of little bits going on. Um, but I like Street Masters. Then they did Brook City, which I haven't played. Then they did this, and then they did... Um, Heroes in Need? In Need of Hero. Heroes in... I don't know. Uh, superhero one. And... Um, so, the, this this one is their, uh, the, the, this is using their patented modular deck system. Let me show you. I made tuck boxes for literally all the cards so I could put this together more easily. And these tuck boxes were designed by someone on Board Game Geek who was uh, an amazingly talented person. And so, um, I printed them out and I built them. But uh, full credit to the person who designed them. Hour of Need and Contra. Ah, thanks, Bayside Junior. Did they also design the new Contra game? That's crazy. So this is uh, these are the tuck boxes. Anyway, so what you can see here, as I should, this is also to help me store it because uh, storage space is an absolute premium. So I could pare it down by doing this. But uh, what you've got here are all different heroes, and each hero has their hero box with their main deck in it as well as an upgrade box of cards they will only use in the campaign mode. So you've got all the different heroes, and then what you've got here are just uh, decks that you'll use in every game. So, you know, your lurkers, equipment cards... No, equipment cards are only used in campaign. But search cards, uh, turn cards, altar cards... Uh, there's a campaign pool and a journal here. These are used for saving things. Out of Luxon deck is the actual story deck. Ruins of Arkinspire, I believe, is another story deck for the expansion. Um, allies and enemy upgrade cards are both for campaign mode as well, both the story and the, the right, unlinked campaign mode. Um, we've also got, uh, then we've got these, which are like the stories and the sort of the individual quests. Uh, then we've got the characters and then these ones up here, these are more quests, I think. I don't know why they're separate to those, but, um, I sort of kept them in the order that they were in the box when I got it. But I did get this on the secondhand market as well, because y'all wanted to see it. So these are uh, enemy sort of monsters, like uh, you'll pick, and then these are like sort of actual like named villains. And so what you'll do typically when you're playing a game is you'll pick a character, one per player, and then you'll pick a quest, and then you'll pick enemies to put in the adventure as well as a big bad, and all of these things will add a new deck of cards that's going to alter the way the game is played, and hence the modular deck system, right? That's kind of the the core of it. Uh, but I don't know which decks are going to be employed in the Out of Lux and Story mode. So that's kind of why this isn't set up at the moment. But never fear, because we're going to get it set up now uh, after we read, I guess, the plot. But uh, that's that's what we're, we're going to kick off the story mode, because I kind of felt like this will be a good way to get an introduction to the game, to see what the story mode looks like. Uh, it will be the same as playing a solo game, except with, uh, I guess sort of structure to it like narrative structure and also structure to the decks we choose you can combine them all at random it's entirely up to you the different quests i believe are different difficulties the game does give you a sort of set when you're beginning it's like if you're going to start playing you should use these decks to sort of ease you into it but um But uh, yeah, so we're we're going to be kind of diving in a bit in the sense that uh, we'll be kicking off the basic campaign from the core set, but we'll also be uh, using a stretch goals character because I asked you all, what do you want to see in terms of character as we played on the YouTube channel and uh, stretch goal character won by a wide margin. The thing is, I'm not sure which ones the stretch goal characters are. I think the one designed by Isaac Childress is a stretch goal character and the one who's a horse is a stretch goal character. And the woman who's also a mercenary um so we might just pick from those but you get to choose because you're the ones who joined live on the stream that's fun 
Um, and if you if there's any more, let me know because there's there was of course the core set heroes. I don't think Ruins of Arkansas comes with any heroes, but there was another box called the First Four, where like sort of uh, histories, histor hi heroes out of antiquity, um, of the lore of the world, which has all been written for this. There's no precursor game or anything like that. And then there was uh, some stretch goal heroes as well. Um, Eddie, there's actually uh, two versions of the board. I have the other mat play mat put away, but uh, what I can do is show you the, uh, the printed board if you like. Um, let me just move these boxes around back here. Because uh, there's, a, there's this version, which is the colorful many rooms version, which, um, as Eddie says, it has a bit of a, an effect on his colorblindness. But then there's also, this could, I don't know if this is the right board, bear with me. Yeah, then there's also this one, which is uh, not got colored rooms. So this is just more traditional dungeon-y fare. You see all gray and bloodstained. So you can play with either board as you're, you prefer. Um, but I picked the colored room one because I thought it would look brighter and more appealing on camera. And also the walls felt a bit more distinct. But the game comes with both. As far as I'm aware. Uh, and then these encounter boards, these are from Ruins of Ark Inspire. This is a, a different game mode where you sort of have a, a more of a skirmish battle than a dungeon crawl. Um, and I think Ruins of Ark Inspire sort of incorporates these skirmishes into the, the plot of that game. I'm not 100% sure, because I haven't read the rules for that. Um, but uh, you've got the rule book, you've got some notes here about the stretch goals, that's it. There's one rather glaring omission, actually, and maybe chat can help me out if they, uh, if they understand the... if they understand the, um, the nuances of this, but... Uh, there's the ruins of Arkansas rules, not very much longer, pretty much only explains the rules for the encounters. So I guess that's the main thing that they've added to that. But then you've got the two story guides, and I think these are the sort of the main the main reasons to get the uh, the, the ruins expansion if you want to play more of this kind of sort of linked story thing. But uh, I suspect if the game proves popular, it wouldn't be surprising to see another expansion in the future. Um, Blacklist also ran a product line of fantasy miniatures that was loosely linked with this and that you could use some of the, the they were generic fantasy miniatures for whatever you want like D&D or something like that but they could be sort of loosely incorporated into this but um, <laughs> but uh, yeah so we got uh, this is what we're going to start with out of Luxon the story guide I'll actually read you the little bit of fluff from the rule book as well just so you have some idea about what this world is about. I mean, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I'll tell you why in a minute. But uh, first, uh, a little bit of story time, and then we'll jump right into the uh, the linked campaign mode, and I'll, I'll sort of explain the rules as we go along as well, so you understand exactly what we're doing and why we're doing it. But, um... <clears throat> All across the troubled lands of Aridica, altars plague the forgotten places. The dank dungeons, ruined castles, endless caves, and power-hungry villains seek them out in hopes to harness the corrupted magic that emanates from them. While these mysterious stones are commonly believed to be physical manifestations of the godlike entities known as runes, they have twisted and pushed to the surface of the earth, they have been twisted and pushed to the surface of the earth by the vile lich queen Sezra, who sleeps beneath Aridika. Heroes have taken it upon themselves to seek out these altars and secure them from the enemy's control. However, the powers, once locked within the altars, have already escaped into the world, and ancient evils have already begun to stir. So that's kind of the premise of the game, is that these um, there are these gods, and they sort of have different magics associated with them. It seems to be the four elements plus light and shadow. Uh, so six elements, which is great, because then they can all be represented on a die. But uh, they are... there is some evil darkness beneath the earth pushing up these altars which are linked to the god's power and we have to find these altars and secure the powers whatever mystical powers are being linked with these altars before the forces of evil can do the same hence altar quest 
So, you know, I was literally reading that plot, and I was like, this is a very weird plot. What are they talking about these altars for? And I was like, oh yeah, it's Altar Quest. Of course it is. But, um, it's actually kind of a, an interesting melding of theme and mechanisms. Because once, we, once you understand how the game is sort of discovered and laid out, because it is procedurally generated to a degree. And once you understand how that generation takes place, you'll actually understand why the theme is the way it is designed to be incorporated with these mechanisms. So here we go. We're going to now read the introduction of the Out of Luxon campaign. So this will have some spoilers in it um, for chapter one of this story campaign. And um, I do apologize for that. So if, uh, if you are worried about spoilers, I'm afraid... This is, uh, you can either stop watching now or come back in 10 minutes um, when we'll be over the spoilers. But uh, what I believe is there'll be some multiple choice here, and then based on the choices we make, we might get assigned different quests or enemy decks. But I haven't looked at this because I wanted to discover it on the show with you guys at home. So, here we go. This is exciting. <clears throat> Since the fall of the evil conqueror Kretsch, the untamed lands of Aridika have turned from a realm of horrors to one of heroes. Actually, do you know what we can do? We can zoom in a bit on this, unless you'd prefer I didn't. I just feel like it's a bit, uh, it makes a bit more sense to have the, the text on screen. Um, even though you can't really see it, you can at least kind of see what, uh, what I'm getting at. Hmm. The vampire lords, known as the Thralls, have retreated to their castles, weary of their war against the invading Austrians while the other warmongering creatures have slunk back into the ruins and crypts that now litter the cursed countryside. The newly elected warrior qu queen of Five Holds, Valerie Wexton, has called for aspiring heroes to venture into the wounded lands in an effort to bring peace and prosperity to a realm despoiled by violence and horror. Aridika had suddenly become a beacon of hope that the allied people of Estoni so desperately needed after a brief yet terrible reign of Kretsch. After the brief yet terrible reign of Kretsch. But what was more, the Queen spoke in depth with you about the fabled altars that had emerged in Aridika since Kretsch's arrival. My scholars tell me they are tied to the slumbering Lich Queen Sezra, Valerie informs you. They delve deep into the histories to make connections or find answers to these phenomena, but it is up to heroes like you to investigate them firsthand as we strive to understand their purpose. The day before your departure for Aridika, you receive an urgent message from the Queen, with instructions that its seal be only broken when you depart Middenvale. Well, it sure would be nice to have a map where all these places are. Is there a map on the back? I mean, there is a map, but... I suppose it doesn't really matter, I guess. Doesn't it look a bit like um, the Old World from Warhammer? Or the Forgotten Coast. Am I thinking of the Forgotten Coast? I'm not sure. One of those two. Anyway. <clears throat> Choose a player to be the party leader. That player finds number two, Mallory's message in the story deck, reads it aloud, and then adds it to the journal. That's me. I'm the primary player, uh, party leader, because I'm also the only player. And so for those of you who don't uh, know, we are going to be playing this true solo, which means I'll be controlling just one hero. Apparently it's perfectly balanced for that. So... Let us find out in due course. But what we need to do is get out our little journal box here, uh, where we can keep cards that are pertinent to our campaign. And we will get the Out of Luxon campaign box and get card number two out of here as well. Ooh. Before you read this story, read the introduction in the Out of Luxon story guide. These cards are too green for my green screen. During the campaign setup, this during the cam, during campaign setup, add this deck to the campaign pool. Players should not look through this deck until the story guide instructs them to look for a specific card. Each card in this deck is numbered, and the numbers okay. So we've got like a little numbered deck of story cards here. Cool. So card number two, Valerie's message. I am pleased you have accepted. Oh, hang on. We can leave that on top so that we don't see what's underneath. Come on screen. I know you can collaborate with me on this because you've done it before. Come on, 
buddy. Maybe that's the, probably the best we're going to get. Valerie's message. I am pleased you have accepted this charge, hero. I would tend to this matter myself if I could, but my new office has its demands. Show this message to no one besides your most trusted companions. When you arrive in Horthon, seek out a wanderer named Huey, the first of his name. It is Mayor Morse Bolton whom I trust most in the matters of your quest, but Huey is well-traveled and knows a thing or two about the fabled altars. Just be warned, he is viewed as quite the pariah in Luxon, and not without reason, but I would prefer to see him unharmed, so keep your association with him unannounced. Party leader gains control of this card. Exhaust. You may discard one focus to change one altar die to a result of your choice. Okay, so this is actually a, now a power that we've got as well. This is an in-game effect that we can use. So, that's kind of nice, actually, that uh, the, the story and the sort of the mechanisms are linking up here already. Which adventurer shall be the first sacrifice to the altar? Quest? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, I like how it's kind of like, only bring people you trust. It's like, I trust no one, I'm going alone. <laughs> okay. The province of Luxon rests on the eastern border, serving as the gateway between the peaceful lands of Five Holds and a world of danger and adventure. Since Queen Valerie's historic coronation, heroes have poured into Aradika to win glory for the newly forged crown. Though many of these heroes had forgotten the Queen's own decree. All able bodies a <clears throat> Let me try that again. All able bodied aspirants heed this call, the royal criers announced in every Five Holds village carrying Valerie's words. The Queen of the Five Holds and all of Eastony has requested errants to carry out her will in the troubled lands of Aridika. She has vanished Kretch and liberated all Aridikans from tyranny. But her quest is far from over. You were but one of many would-be heroes that answered that call, and thus began your journey to the town of Hawthorne in Luxon. The journey was astonishingly pleasant. The late spring makes for fair travel weather, and the queen ensured you, you were well ensured you were well provisioned. It wasn't until you had crossed through the mountain pass into Luxon that you encountered the first frogs. The frog-like creatures have crept far enough into five holds that you are no stranger to them. But this one moves awkwardly, not even hiding from your presence. It limps towards the main road, collapsing into the tall grass before reaching you. You sense some sort of trap. Choose one of the following. Approach the collapsed frolks to investigate. Continue quickly on to Hawthorne before more, more frolks show up. Now go to eight. Okay, so we've got multiple choice options now. And we're also moving out of introduction into chapter one. Trust no one, especially the patrons who support my channel. <laughs> yes, you are. You're right about that, chat. So, for those of you who want to know a little bit more about what's going on here, these are, uh, this, we got some frolks here. They're like frog dudes. And they're baddies. They're not, I guess they're not friendly. Note, when players are presented with options in the story, they mutually decide and read the blah blah blah. Okay, Mike in the in the channel chat pick. Got it. So, I want to see uh, votes in chat for approach the collapsed frolks to investigate or continue on quickly to Horthon before more frocks, before more frocks show up. Frocks. Did I say frolks? Frocks. It's frocks. But that sounds weird. That sounds like a dress pretty dress but anyway while you have a think about that who knows which of these characters are stretch goals i know that uh seren rowan quella and myrene are the core set i know Layson is the character designed by um isaac childress it's a it's it's basically legolas Except then you find out he's also a werewolf, and he turns into a werewolf and goes nuts. So I'm pretty sure he's a Kickstarter exclusive. Um, yeah, Van Geyser was a stretch goal. He's some kind of warrior with a really cool sword, 
but also he's a horse. So, if you're into that, there's the Van Geyser. We've already got votes for uh, for the werewolf dude. Um, Billy says Bojack Horseman is a stretch goal. <laughs> it's true. I don't know about Gwyndel or... Um, I think at least one more of these is a... Oh, Blake is a stretch goal. That's the... Yeah, she's the, the mercenary woman. Um, who definitely looks like she could win an arm wrestling contest. So I remember she was a stretch goal as well. And then I guess one, there must be one more, because I think the others all come from first four, and there's four of those, and I seem to have five more here, so... Um, I guess it must be Gwyndel, because I seem to have put these in order unbeknownst to me. Is she from first four, some kind of elven mage? Gwyndel and Loxley. I don't have Loxley. No peculiar. I've got a Blake Gallows and a Gwyndel. Well, I see, I see, I see. Oh, Loxley's her pet. Okay, cool. What's her pet? Is there a model for it? Gwyndol. Oh, look at that! It's a light-up cat! That's fun. Oh, it's an ally. Okay, I did read the rules for allies, but they haven't actually come up in my play... my solo plays. But uh, I think you just activate them with an action, and then they just move and attack. <laughs> this is their relationship. Get them, cat! <laughs> Do all the work! Cool. Alright, so I see Bayside's vote got one for Layson. Um, Eddie's got one for the Layson as well. I also see everyone else confirming that these are the stretch goal characters, but nobody's voting for any characters. So are we happy with Legolas the Werewolf to play? Is that what we're going to do? He looks so peaceful. Actually, he looks troubled. He's like, oh, any minute now, I'm gonna, gonna turn into a werewolf. Looks like we've also got one vote for horse and one vote for the cat lady, but I don't think that's enough yet to break the tie. Nobody wants to play Blake, because apparently she doesn't have anything interesting going on. Poor thing. Great. I think it's going to be the werewolf then, gang. And I don't have any idea how this character plays. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> this character was not in the recommended beginner characters. I've only played with Cedrin Highmore, who's some kind of cleric. And I quite liked it because he just healed himself all the time. And he was, like, unkillable. So... There you go. Alright, so now at least we know who we are as we go on this adventure. And I see that, uh... I see that we are investigating uh, the, the, the frocks. I saw one vote for investigate, so I guess we're going to investigate the frocks. I, too, choose to investigate the frocks. Okay, go to 20... Is this page 26, then? I guess we're not yet on chapter 1 if we jump around like this. Oh, there's paragraphs at the back here. Okay. <clears throat> you approach the motionless frocks cautiously, preparing yourself for any ambush. It may have served as a... Di uh, preparing yourself for any ambush it may have served as a diversion for. Fortunately, the late afternoon spring wind sending the surrounding long grass into rhythmic dance is the only moment... You notice. I believe that's supposed to say movement. 
The long grass and her rhythmic dance is the only movement you notice. You bend over the fallen frocks to find her dead, various wounds adorning her scaly body. You pull out what appears to be a massive boar's tusk from one of the wounds. Raglanders. You curse under your breath, not wanting to wait around to see the pig vermin that gave this frox its wounds. But before you depart, you take a brief moment to further inspect what's in the frox's hand. A jagged stone that gives off a faint aura of power. As you pack up the stone, you notice a dull... Uh, you notice a chill wind, and realize that it's much later in the day than you thought. You better make haste to arrive at Hawksthorn in time for some rest. Add card number three, the mysterious stone, to the journal, and continue on to chapter one. There is more story here than I anticipated. Yeah, Eddie. Hopefully, the uh, hopefully the uh, werewolf elf is reasonably good for solo play, or else I'm in trouble. But it doesn't say anywhere like don't use these ones for solo play or anything like that. So I presume that we're fine to pick whoever we want. And if I die horribly, I can blame that. So you should take bets to see how far I get before I die. Yep, that's reasonable. <clears throat> It appears to be a piece of the fabled altars. It's almost like you can see right through it. Cancel an altar effect. The altar dice, the altar die is still rolled. Oh, that's very useful as well. See, and this is what I'm talking about. There's a lot of like sort of uh, very specific functions in this game that sort of relate to one another. Anyway, um, so you have to kind of get your head around that. Yeah, you've never steered me wrong in the past, chat, so I'm sure that uh, Lace and Pines is a good, a good choice. Chapter 1 A cloudy morning breaks over Hawthorne as you wake in the quaint inn at the orchard. Your rustic accommodations are just outside of Hawthorne's town walls, if that was what you call the meager stone barrier that protects the rural town against the otherwise tame landscape that surrounds it. You prepare for your scheduled meeting at dawn with Mayor Bolton, taking only a few moments to banter with the inn's furry folk proprietor, and happily accepting her complimentary breakfast. So I guess Burry is a class, is a race in this world. Hmm. Perform the first two steps of normal game setup, then each hero gains a focus. Okay. I can't remember the exact order, so we can, oh, shall have to have a quick look here in the rule book. But I believe this is just set up my character thing. Set up my character cards in my character deck, basically. But here we go. So if the 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 okay. So the game board and choose a hero and set up heroes. Uh, I mean, see, it seems a bit odd to actually begin the story before you've chosen your heroes. But there you go. I also have here a player aid and also some notes I made about some stuff that I'll forget otherwise. Um. So when we set up our hero. These are our upgrade cards, and we'll save these for later. We're going to start with the hero deck here, and we should have one card, and then we've got a whole bunch of text, because this hero has all kinds of special rules, and a couple of pieces of equipment as well. So, unlike other heroes, Lace and Pines has an elf form, and also... Rah, werewolf form! Rah. I mean, I don't know why you'd ever turn back into the elf, quite frankly. Yeah, quick hair. Let's have a quick shot before we go uh, meeting the mayor. <laughs> Nero, yeah, it's it's. Uh, this is the only way I can play solo games. With uh, chat here, so I can blame them for my mistakes. Otherwise, I have to take full accountability for all of my errors. So Layson has uh, not much in terms of might. So we've got six stats on there. Um, I mean, I guess, real quick, the uh, top left blue arrow, that's armor. The right green, red circle, that's health. The six stats, top to bottom, left to right, are might, fortitude, dexterity, faith, um, charisma, I think. Or maybe will willpower, faith, willpower, and then intelligence. So we're quite good at all of the things except for 
physical strength and fortitude. Presumably in our other form it's different. Yep, in our other form we have low intelligence, but very high might. Cool. And you get a little power down the bottom as well. So we can spend a, a water rune, no, a shadow rune, to suffer one damage and flip this card over. Okay, so essentially we need a shadow rune to become the werewolf. I'll explain runes later. But we'll just take a damage and then we'll become the werewolf! And uh, then our power as the werewolf is to become the elf again. Which requires us to spend a sun rune or a light rune. So it's like light, night, and day. That makes sense. Perfect sense. Cool. Uh, and we have two pieces of equipment as well. And of course our, our sort of deity is Loon. Which is uh, of course some kind of night or moon deity. That makes perfect sense. Ranger bow. You cannot equip an offhand card. You can attack with dexterity. And you can exhaust the water rune to deal a damage to an enemy within range. Uh, the Crescent of Loon allows you to uh, roll up to two altar dice and exhaust to heal and draw a card. Ooh. <laughs> Stay werewolf forever. Yeah, pretty sure there are drawbacks. There are probably drawbacks, but do you know what? We, we can overcome these drawbacks in order to stay werewolf. Stay werewolf forever. Right, what do we got here? Layton has two miniatures to represent the two different forms. He begins the game on his elf, and then he becomes the werewolf. And you can, yep, swap the minis out. Got it. Aha! While he's in elf form, you can only play and resolve elf hero cards. While he's in werewolf form, you can only play and resolve werewolf cards. Okay. So basically, anything that allows us to change alter dice is going to be really important. Um, and I'll explain why. Because that's how we get runes. Layton's uh, starting equipment cards are double-sided, and oh, they're flipped! Okay, so our bow becomes claws, and our necklace becomes, oh, moon necklace. Sun necklace and moon necklace. Um, they're double-sided, they're flipped when you become a werewolf. He gains a new weapon, and during the campaign... Oh, if he gets a new weapon card during the campaign, place it on top of his ranger bow so that he can still use the back of the card. Right, so no matter what weapon we've got, when we're a werewolf, we use the werewolf claws to scratch and attack. Rawr, wolf claws. You cannot equip an offhand card. Yep. If there's a weapon card under this card, gain plus one die. You can't see the die because they're blue and it's green screened it out, even though it's supposed to react to green and not blue. Uh, we can exhaust a stone rune to deal a damage to an enemy within range as well. Cool. And this is just... Um, this allows us to roll altar dice, basically. So the necklace is how we're going to get to change between forms if we get the die results we need. So we've got uh, werewolf cards here in the deck. Oof. Grizzly. Um, and elf cards as well. So hand management is going to be a thing for him in a way it's not really with other characters. <laughs> Spot weakness. That's really funny. Like, boy! What's going on here? Yep. Okay. Nice. Let's pick a cool, challenging character. Because you, you all know that I'm good for it. Um, okay, so... We'll pop our hero card down here. Our equipment cards next to it. I wish I had slightly more room. We could probably slide this up a little bit. You don't actually need the path around the outside, so that's fine. Can we fit more cards over here? Yes. Okay. We need to remember that uh, these ones here can be used for useful effects. I also need a threat area, but fortunately, because I'm the only player, I can have one threat area. Otherwise, each player normally needs their own threat area. Um, but there's going to be a lot of cards to put out on this table, so that's why I'm being conservative here. Right, and we don't really need this Leighton Pines card anymore. What we do need are some miniatures! So, let's see if I can find my miniatures over here. In the game box.
And if y'all are upset with the way I've organized my minis, I feel you, but space is a premium. So I have bags of minis. Game designers make better inserts, basically. Oh, dude, look at the miniature for the horseman. It's super cool. Check this out. Is his sword bent because I packed him horribly? Yeah, look how cool that is. Hang on. <laughs> You're going to need a better camera for this. Are you going to focus? There we go. Look at him. What a... Come on. Come on. Focus here. Focus on the mini. I'm going to have to do this manually. Why do I always have to do this manually? There we go. Why can't you just do that normally? Why can't you be normal? I can show the people at home the cool miniatures. Like the double... Like, ba he looks like a horse that's a witcher. He's like a... He's like if, uh... What's Geralt's horse called? It's like if Geralt's horse just took over. Like he inherited the job of being the witcher. Hey, Maestro. Yeah, I know. The, uh, the head tracking is very sensitive. It's not, um, ideal, but it's also, uh... Oh, look at the cat! It's got a flaming tail. But one day, when I have a budget for a camera crew, we can do away with it. That's cool. I like its big flaming tail. I wonder if it has a... I wonder if it has an ability to, like, light the dungeon as you go on a little adventure with it. Alright, so we are... Leighton Pines, who's this elf figure here. Who looks unremarkable and normal and every day but the good news is we also get to be this werewolf who appears to have an eight pack and is very scary so that's fun Okay. There's all manner of other characters, including this one. I don't think that's a playable character. I think some of these are NPCs. Yes, civilians. Heroes and civilians in this bag. That's how I've organized it. Alright, so we've got our miniatures. We've got our character deck here. And we do, I think the f part of chapter four actually is to shuffle this and then to, it's that high protein diet. <laughs> yeah, he's been eating all of his, all of his, uh, his adversaries. Those frocks won't know what hit him. Oh, I left, uh, Van Geyser out here. Off you trot. Yeah, I kind of wish the face tracking wouldn't actually zoom out. It would just... If it lost tracking, it would just kind of pause or something. Instead of zooming in and out all the time. But, uh... A lot of the other face trackers are not... Very, are, are worse than this. In other ways. Give this a real good shuffle, because I think it looked like all the cards were still in order. Is this the right way to do this? I don't know. Anyway. When my opening hand is nothing but werewolf cards, it just means we'll have to become a werewolf all the quicker. One, two, three, four is the opening hand. And yeah, we've got, a, we've got some elf cards. We've got a werewolf card. Anyway, we can look at those in more detail uh, when we get to the adventuring part of things. For now... Oh, and we gain a focus. Where's my tokens? Where's my tokens at? Focus token. Yeah! One. Those are important for making the dice cooperate. The mayor's estate is nestled in the center of Hawthorne.
on the corner of the town's main thoroughfare and next door to a smithy shop called Westrick's Wares. Several cruelly armored town guards nod at your passing, certainly keeping a close eye on you, but also clearly not surprised to see more travelers in these parts. The Queen's instructions are very clear. Meet with her close ally Mayor Bolton and gain his support. Her more discreet instructions were a little less clear, however. You are unsure of how pressing it is to find this Huey character she spoke of, but certainly he isn't worth keeping the mayor waiting for. Dot dot dot. Choose one of the following. Search for Huey, or head to the mayor's estate immediately. Hmm. What the hell is that? So... But I'm inclined to... I'm inclined to find... So Huey's a seasoned traveler, right? That's what we know about him? He's a seasoned traveler who knows something about these parts. I do wonder if he might give us some useful information about the mayor or something the mayor's going to ask us to deal with that maybe we can put to good use. So I'm inclined to look for Huey first. After all... I don't... It might not be polite to keep the mayor waiting, but also... I mean, he's not going anywhere. Whereas I don't know what Huey can do other than give us a, information that might help us. So, let's go talk to Huey. First. I mean, we're looking for Huey, Robert. Time is of the essence, but you remember the Queen's instructions about keeping your search for Huey discreet. Choose one of the following. Ask a guard about a person named Huey. Spend some time searching for Huey yourself. Uh, well, let's be discreet. I don't want to go asking the guards. That doesn't sound discreet. You casually join a throng of villagers going about their morning business in the thoroughfare. Remembering Queen Valerie's words, you keep your search for Huey discreet, playing the part of an everyday traveler while keeping your eyes and ears focused. Gain one focus. Cool, well that's useful. As you pass through the small market in the square, a young Scythian acolyte from the Temple of Aluna approaches you and smiles. Please, the girl says gently, take this and let the light guide you. The hero gains the Potion of Healing search card. This is great! This is definitely worth it. Alright, let me get my search cards out here. Alright. I got a deck of search cards. These are like sort of, uh, just like little generic treasures you can find in the dungeons. They're mostly potions and consumables and that kind of thing. Potion of healing. Brilliant. Ooh. You gladly accept her offer and ask if she knows someone called the Wanderer. She giggles. That's Huey, she informs you. She points with a small thumb to the library near the mayor's estate. He's usually reading books or laughing at nothing. My older sister says he's lost it, but I'm not sure what he lost. I'd like to help him find it. You nod to the girl, give her one of your silver currants that Queen Valerie provided you with, and head toward the library. Okie dokie. You find the old man Huey stooped over an enormous old book and a piping hot beverage. Oh, greetings from the Queen, is it? Huey gives you a pleasant enough smile. He's a kind-looking old man with inquisitive eyes and the disheveled clothing of a beggar. But something about him gives off a curious sense of importance. You carefully explain to Huey your purpose in being in Luxon. Oh, the mayor and I are fast friends, Huey assures you. Let us go see him together! Add Huey to the journal, and go to section 10. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know if Huey and the mayor are friends. Maybe I shouldn't take him with me. But it looks like I don't have a choice now. So 
So we're going to get card number 10 out of here. They should have numbered the back of these, actually, so you don't have to flip it over, but it's easy enough. Hunted. Uh-oh, that's not... I thought this was going to be a... Well, no, wait, card number 10? No, card number 5, not card number 10. Oops, go to number 10. My bad. Huey! Oh, Huey's the... Uh, we've got a civilian token for him. Well, the good news is, he lets us uh, change alter dice to results of our choice. Which is going to be very important for a werewolf that needs to swap back and forth. He attacks with his intelligence. And rerolls alter dice. All of these things are good. I don't know what happens when he dies, but uh, hopefully that won't happen. Alright, I do have a figure for Huey as well. He's in the civilian bag right here. Yeah, can you imagine if we're going through this in wolf form? <laughs> you eat the little girl. Gain hit points. Yep, there's the Huey figure. <laughs> Let's uh, deal with this now. Uh, yep, he's basically an old man of the cave. He's like, hello! I think this was a stretch goal as well, because I think... I mean, it's interesting, really, because there's a token for this guy, and the tokens in the main box imply they were thinking about having a retail release, but I haven't seen a retail release planned, and when they emailed them about it, they didn't mention anything, so... I'm sort of uh, surprised um, that they were sort of... They built it that way. Um... In any case, uh, move to part 10. When you enter the mayor's manor, a tall, solid vampire descends the stairs, his long black hair cascading behind him. His dark eyes immediately find Huey, and the casual courtesy seems to fade from his pale face. Hello, Morse. Oh, no, this is Huey. Hello, Morse, Huey calls out almost patronizingly. I hear you've called together a council. The mayor gives Huey a polite nod, then turns to you. Thank you for venturing here so urgently. Mayor Bolton's voice is quiet and sharp as a razor. The queen sent word of your arrival, and it comes at Hawthorne's most desperate hour. Please join me in my study. Looks like uh, vampires are just Friend, uh, people who exist in this world. So that's fine. Um, right. And then I guess we go back to the main chapter because that seems to be the end of our choices. Hmm. <clears throat> Thank you, Susie. Morse says as his Burry Folk servant sets down a tray of tea and quickly exits the study shutting the double doors behind her. The vampire turns his attention to you. Forgive the meager offerings, but things in Luxon haven't exactly been prosperous of late. Knowing the queen, she's probably left it for me to inform you of the situation at hand. Since Valerie's coronation, restlessness has taken hold in Aridica. A vacuum of power, so to speak. There are many heroes like yourselves roaming the provinces, and while many of them are of similar noble intent, others have stirred up trouble and increased tension in each of the provinces. Here in Luxon, we are suffering the effects of these heroes. Uh, the effects as these heroes press farther west into Eridica. Morse rises from his chair and takes a rolled piece of parchment from his shelf and unrolls it on the table between you. He uses a pale finger tipped in a long, sharp nail to point to Luxon on the map of Eridica. Our province is nearest to the Five Holds, which works in our favor in many ways, but it also means we are the most removed from the happenings in Eridica. I can't say for sure what has caused it, but Raglanders have been driven out of the western provinces, maybe by valiant heroes, maybe by something else, and have claimed our province as their new home, if that weren't bad enough, our existing frocks problem has already gotten out of hand. Farms are regularly raided, travelers robbed and killed on the roads. 
Now the Frocks and Raglanders have quarrel over their meager holds in Luxon, and my people are caught in the middle. The mayor soberly continues his report, detailing how one of his personal caravans was recently ambushed while bringing his family's heirlooms to Hawthorne from his old keep, the Harrows. My first task for you is to recover something of mine that was stolen by these Raglander wretches, Morrison Strux, moving over to a satchel on the floor behind his luxurious chair. He places the satchel on the table on top of the map. It's clearly filled with travel supplies. Into the into the, the tokens and get one supply token. These are very useful. More supply tokens, please. Can you can you not see anything? Please, camera. Show the good people the, the tiny backpack. And loaves of bread that the vampire gave me. The mayor sits down again. Among the many things stolen was an urn. Very decorative, filigree and crimson metals. I need it returned to me. Leave the old tapestries and take whatever else treasures you recover as payment. Just bring me the urn. It is precious to me. You may ask why Morse or his personal guards can't recover the urn themselves. If the mysterious stone is in your journal, you can show it to Morse. If Huey is in the journal, you must listen to him banter with Morse. Oh, if Huey is in the journal, I guess, yeah, did I, was I supposed to add Huey to the journal? I just put him on the table. I guess you must listen to him banter with more, so I guess I have to go to six first. And then uh, maybe we can ask him about the rest later on. Huey jolts suddenly in his chair, as if he had fallen asleep and must have been startled awake. Quite the tale, my old friend. I hope you don't mind if I accompany our new allies on this most dangerous of adventures. I think you mean new ally. Unless he refers to my elf form and wolf form as separate entities. I should very much like to see this urn for myself. He gives the mayor a playful wink. Morse fixes the old man with an icy cold stare, deigning to reply. Oh, don't you worry, Huey continues standing up. With me along, your treasure is as good as found. Let's just hope the thralls don't get to it first, eh? Huey's laughter is nothing less than sinister. Thralls are some kind of enemy. I know because I have a deck box called Thralls in the, in the pack. No, I ignore that. So do we just move on then, or do we get to make another choice? I don't think we get to make another choice. I mean, it's, it is ambiguous. There also doesn't seem to be any rules for how to actually manage this section of the rule. There's literally nothing explaining how this works. It's just I'm inferring it from uh, from what I know about board games. But I think uh, that's fine. I think that's probably our... It wouldn't be a choice if we could take multiple options. So, unfortunately, Huey has wasted our time, but at least he's here and we've got an ally, so that's useful. <clears throat> My scouts know exactly where the Raglanders are holed up, Morse says, motioning to a collection of hills on the map. Right outside of Hawthorne. It's close. Much too close for my liking. Knowing that Valerie sent you to me, I trust you fully in this matter, and have faith that you'll bring back that urn. It's not safe out there. Best setup. Find the Raglander's lair with the mayor's map possesses no finding the Raglander's lair with the mayor's map possesses no real trouble. However, as you approach the entryway into what must be an underground ruin, a cruel stench overpowers you. Each hero must test fortitude two. And if you fail, suffer two damage. So a test like this um, it's just a binary test, which means I basically have to roll my stats, and I need two successes. Um, so here we're just testing two, and then we suffer two damage if we fail. Hey, Indra, thanks for stopping by, and uh, have a good sleep. So here we go. What we're looking for here are uh, successes, which are basically every die face except for this shield. 
but we can spend focus to make that a success. So given that we have two focus, chances are we'll be okay here, but I have a feeling that if I roll these in the green screen box, they're just not going to show up. So here we go. All right, so we've got one success and one focus. So I think we should spend a focus token rather than starting the game with two damage. So there we go. We've overcome the Raglander's stench. And so we're going to play with the search quest deck. That makes sense. I guess we are looking for um, an, an, an urn. The threat deck is the Raglanders. So, this is telling us now how we're setting up the game, of course. And the boss uh, villain is Gert, who is, uh, looks like she's coming at us with trotter maces. Oof, scary, scary, scary stuff. I don't like any of these images. They're all quite frightening, actually. Does this remind me of like a some? Uh, is it uh, Animal Farm? Is, does this remind me of Animal Farm? Note the deck lists under quest setup. The deck decks listed under quest setup specify which decks the players choose when setting up that quest. If an entry lists any deck, the players may choose which deck to use for that quest. Uh, camping upkeep. All right, so I guess this is post adventure so now we're just doing this quest um presumably winning the quest oh here we go so there's won the quest lost the quest so i guess this is uh after adventure upkeep and then this is the winning bit and this is the losing bit so i guess we're just getting on with the game now yeah these decks are going to take up a lot of space so we're gonna have them all set up over here in such a way as it kind of makes it easier for me to parse but i do apologize that these ones are all already like quite hard to see down the bottom here um but there we go um that, that you don't need to see that in fact i can put my character cards there there's my hand of cards okay so the journal can go back over here for now. And we've got a potion of healing, so that's good. And we're going to need some raglanders. Who are pig man. So there's one major oversight that I couldn't find, so I'm going to outline it now. And then uh, if you guys know in chat how it was kind of dealt with, um, you can let me know. Because actually I played the search already in solo mode, uh, but I played it with Frox. Um, because that's the recommended starting setup. So I've never used the Raglanders or Gert. I don't know what they do. But I know what the search is. And you have to... The thing is, there. so these are the feature cards, right? And the features are... Uh, an important element of how the gate the dungeons procedurally generated and so when you go into a room you'll find it has a feature in it as well as a enemy of some description or some kind of enemy element but what's interesting is that uh oh see you later dustin thanks for hanging out um so the altar found card is of course important that's why i've set it up there but the game comes with uh seven of these feature cards and it kind of assumes that you'll have seven feature cards in the deck. Uh, or rather, seven plus the altar found card in the deck. But I've got all these other ones, some of which are from Arkinspire, and some are from the stretch goals. And there's nowhere in the game to tell you how to incorporate these into the game that I can find. There's no text about that. So what I've been doing is I've just been basically shuffling all the feature cards together and then dealing seven. Um to make up the uh, the same size feature deck that it's supposed to have, but using the features from the stretch goals as well as uh, the expansion. Now, I don't know if that's correct, but like I said, there's literally no text in any of the rule books about it. And uh, if you have a feature deck that's larger than it's supposed to be, the structure of the game breaks down 
because essentially you have to get through the feature deck to beat Surge. I don't know if that's always the case, but anyway. So that and aside, that's how I've been doing it. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen any text or anything anywhere about that, but um, I mean, even if I weren't to use the ones from the expansions, I'd still have two cards too many because of the stretch goals. So, I don't know. Anyway, so that's how we're doing it uh, for this, but uh, of course, if you... Three, four, five, six, seven. But if you, um, yeah, if you know better, let me know, and I'm happy to correct it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. He deals eight cards, <laughs> even though he counted them aloud. Okay, now we don't need the equipment cards right now, but we will need this lurker deck potentially. Blam, and we'll need the search cards as well for sure. Okay, so let's uh, follow the little guidelines here just to make sure we get this in the right order. Choose and set up the quest. Yep, so when you're setting up a quest, you grab a, you start with the quest deck, which is the one that comes in, it doesn't come in a box like this, but you'll have organized these with your dividers if that's how you're, you're doing it. And um, each quest will come with a sort of setup rules here. So this is the search. Since their appearance, the altars have attracted more than just power-hungry schemers and vile monsters. Legendary artifacts that have remained hidden from the world for centuries are also drawn towards the magic that emanates from the altars. It is a common belief that all relics are enchanted weapon, and enchanted weapons were originally empowered by the hidden altars. You cannot leave these items to be found by the evil forces. And in this case, you've been asked by a vampiric mayor to recover a magic urn. So we're going to set up by shuffling the altar found and two other feature cards to the bottom of the, uh, the feature deck. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the clue cards out from this deck and we're going to create a sort of a quest area on the side of the board over here. So Martin says he does the same thing as me with the altar cards. Thanks, Martin. Um, and on the back here, what we've got is a sort of a special quest rules. So this tells us how we're going to win. It says, uh, if there is, so 1p is uh, 1 times the number of players, p is the number of players, so because we're playing solo, if there's one quest token on this card, and each hero is on the stairs tile, the heroes have found the artifact and win the game. If at any time a hero may discard any number of clue cards, uh, at any time a hero may discard any number of clue cards they control, and this is activated as well. And that, that bit about the clue cards will make more sense once we, uh, we discover how those come out during the course of the game. But uh, we see here that uh, this, when this activates, each hero controls a clue. Each hero controls a clue card. They must either discard one focus for each clue card they control, or resist three, which is a damage check. So it might take damage if we fail the the resistance. Uh, if there's one quest token on this card, each hero must draw one threat card. So when this activates with a quest token on it, we'll have to draw a threat card. So. This actually activates sort of third in an order, so I'm going to put it down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the, the quests and I'm going to make the two decks. So we've got one deck of clue cards here. And then we've got one deck of quest cards, which is going to go over here next to, well, actually just to the left of the search card here. And uh, if we zoom in a bit, hopefully you guys can see me set this up a bit more easily as I explain how... I'm sort of organizing this modular deck system. But essentially, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to have one hero turn. And on my turn, I'm going to do my actions and my various bits that I want to do. And then this is going to flip over. And we're going to have a threat turn, then a villain turn, and then a quest turn. And so, because we're going to activate these in these three orders. Now, the threat turn is threats that are assigned to a specific hero. So, in a solo mode, this is very easy because uh, there's only one threat Q, which is mine, the one belonging to uh, my hero. If you had multiple players, each player would have their own distinct threat area, but uh, I'll just have one. So I'm going to put my threat area up here, my villain area here, and my quest area down the bottom, so that I can just go and activate these things in order at the side of the table here. But uh, you couldn't do that with uh, multiple players. Each player would have to have their own threat area that's distinct from the other players. So here we have our villain, 
the search deck. And that's going to be important in due course, you'll see why. But we've also got our uh, clue cards here that we're shuffling up. And these will also be important as well. We don't need to put them. But these will go uh, separately. We're instructed to make a separate deck with these. And that's how the modular deck system works. Sometimes it's just like, oh, this deck becomes two decks. And put that somewhere else. Okay. And we might have to make room for coffee down here because we're tight on space. Already, as I knew we would be. The thing is, we probably won't even explore half of these rooms, but that's important. The space is important. Okay. Um, so, what we have to do now is take the altar found, and we're going to shuffle into... Hey, board game Bree! Oh, it's Bree! Thanks for joining in, Bree. We're playing Altar Quest. We're just, we've just now got to the point in the first campaign where we get to set up the game. So it's exciting. Some pigs have stolen an urn from a vampire, and we have to recover it. And we're a werewolf. So that's pretty neat. Right, so put those into... So this is, uh, this is the stream where everyone watches me set up the Sadler Brothers modular deck system. <laughs> Alright, hopefully I've put my altar card on top, but who knows. And... There we go. There is our feature cards. So we can put those over here for now. They're going to come out and go into the quest area here. These are my action tokens. I actually need these over here. And that's done. So now we can set up uh, the raglanders. They're going to come with a little uh, special sheet as well that explains how they work. But these are essentially the monsters that are going to be occupying the dungeon. And so this is their threat deck of horrible beasties. And this is going to tell us any special rules we need to know about them. So we've got here the Raglander's reference card. Flood and fury is the war cry of the ra f food. Food and fury is the war cry of the Raglanders, nomadic swine folk that live only to burn, cook, and gorge. Their home Ragland may have been stolen from them by vampires, but their hunger for violence is not limited to mere vengeance. So threat tokens which are these guys here. These all have different purposes depending on what threat you're facing. Threat tokens represent the unpleasant stench the Raglanders give off, which increases in potency as they become enraged. Before a minion with threat tokens would activate, each character in its room must resist X, where X equals the number of threat tokens on the minion card. So in this case, the threat tokens are actually going to be put on minion cards. Which is interesting, when you're playing against the frocks, they, they use the threat tokens as poison that they apply to you. So, essentially you'll find these tokens to be modular, just like the deck system and basically everything else. So you can put that up here in the threat area to remind us of how that functions. Then we just give their deck a good shuffle, and I'm just going to make sure I give this a proper shuffle, because I don't know if it's actually ever been used. Uh, it must have, actually, because I did get this second hand, and I think the previous owner played through this campaign, but just in case... Give it a proper good mix-up. Cards, adventure, fantasy, and exploring. My love language. Yeah, Bree, this is, uh, I imagine, uh, <laughs> someone who's worked with uh, decks like, uh, with uh, the Seventh Continent and stuff like that, this would be uh, something up your, uh, up your street. Although, uh, this is very much a uh, cards and dungeon dungeon exploring but we're going to module there's it's it's quite clever the way this game actually modularly not module procedurally generates the dungeon through the modules you apply but uh, it does it does lead to some very strange terrain and i'll show you that to you guys as we play i just realized actually i've put the board uh upside down to the way i had it when i was playing the solo version or on my own rather i had the board literally the other way around so it doesn't matter. You can play with the board any way around that you want. When you uh, you get to start in literally any room, so it's kind of irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. I mean, it, it is important, but uh, it's up to you how you want to set off. Hey, Alessandro, thanks for joining in. Glad you could finally catch up with the live stream, buddy. All right, so here's Gert's deck. Now, what we want to do, ideally, is get in and out before Gert shows up. 
because um, there's a card because uh, I didn't actually in in both of my solo outings my one-off adventures I didn't actually have to deal with any of the bosses so I but I think that they look scary and hard and I don't want to have to deal with them so hopefully we can get in and out and find this vampire's urn before Gert shows up and we have to fight her I mean the objective here as you'll remember from the search card is to get one quest token on this card and then get back to the stairs which means we don't actually have to kill the villain um, if we don't uh, if, if we, we can't for whatever reason so or not can't if we don't want to um, if it doesn't work for us so that's good but the villain may well show up and uh, that would be bad so what we've got here are special rules for Gert uh, Gertrude Westbrook acquired her name through the same means she acquired all of her possessions. Theft. Her given name of Bessie was not dignified enough for someone of her quality. So when her litter raided the Westbrook estates in Suarez, she took the lady of the house's name after dining on her soft flesh. Since the fall of New Chalice, Gert and her drove of Ragland refugees roam at Aridica in search of their next meal, and maybe someday their new home. So these are pig people who eat uh, people. I imagine they probably eat anything. So each hero must either discard one armor token or resist three when she activates. Um, oof, I don't like that. And each minion gains one armor token as well if there's any earth runes in the pool. So we shall try to avoid that if at all possible. So we got our three rows all set up here. If we zoom in here, we should... Yeah, I mean... Let me see if I can adjust this light so you can see that a little better without making all of this too dark. Uh, eh. How about if I put it up like this? Is this better? Is this too dark now? Unclear. If it's, uh, if it's too dark, let me know. We can uh, see if we can sort out the light. Okay. So now I need to get the figures out! Oh my god. Um, and then that's, that's basically it. I think we're pretty much good to go after that. We have to do the search deck and the, um, the lurker deck as well, but that's fine. Um, we will need those only when instructed to do so. Uh, the lurkers are essentially random sort of uh, enemies that can come out and uh, they're just kind of uh, distinct from the distinct from the existing threat deck so all of the enemies will be the uh, the raglanders unless they come out of the lurker deck and then they could be anything from the kickstarter basically but uh, we'll only use those if we either run out of these threat cards or if we come across something that instructs us specifically to go into the uh the lurker deck and the search deck is just nice little treasures we can find so that's fine that's good we want those oh altars we need we need an altar yes uh, we need to specify which altar we're using as well so there is of course a magical altar somewhere here in the in the dungeon where our magical urn is being concealed by Gert and so let's see what kind of altar we're dealing with here this one. Back in the box, please. Thank you. The burning altar. Each hero must suffer one, or each hero may suffer a damage to change one altar die to a result of their choice. Each hero in the altar's room may deal one damage to an enemy in their room. Ooh. Each figure must either discard an armor token or suffer a damage if there's a fire rune. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So we can leave that up there for now. The altar will not appear until uh, we get the altar found card out of the feature deck. So until that time, it's just uh, going to be... Well, we're going to be on the hunt for it. So, we're going to need some little monster uh, bases here. We're going to need to find our Raglanders, which are in somewhere in one of my boxes. 
Where are the raglanders? I'm also going to need a, 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 a scorched, a burning altar. And see, this is why I couldn't set any of it up in advance, because I didn't know what was going to happen, guys. Otherwise, I would have definitely done this. Aha. So we'll need this bag, because it's got the stairs in it. So we can pick where we're going to put the stairs, and that's going to be our entry point into the dungeon. Possibly somewhere in the middle would be good, actually. I don't know. That's not... I've usually put them in the corner. Here's our scorched altar. Um, our invisible scorched altar. There we go. Come on now. I believe in you, green screen. You can do it. You can show them the altar. Come on, it's not even blue. It's it's not blue, it's grey. Let's see if we can uh, adjust this a bit. I believe we had it there. Oh, it's so close. Anyway, there, there we go. There's our, our magical altar. This is what's causing problems, thanks to Witch Queen, Lich Queen Cezra putting her evil into it from the, uh, the... Just... Earth. So, well, this tray is the most important because it's got the doors on it. We need the doors to uh, open the doors. But here we go. Here is our pig people. So here is a, a raglander with bat. Actually, these are probably short on the video screen, okay? Because they're dark. So, this guy. We've got... This little guy here, who seems to be hucking a bomb. <laughs> Don't throw that thing, man. And we've got... Is that it? No. Here we go. This maniac. <laughs> Knives. All right, cool, good. Feeling optimistic about these pig monsters. And so there's a system here where we're gonna color code them so that we know when they activate. And then they will uh, spawn out of the deck and come and try and kill us. Gert is probably also somewhere here, but uh, we'll wait and surprise ourselves with that miniature if she spawns. I mean, hopefully she won't, but you never know. You see, yeah, that <laughs> brings a whole new meaning to hog roast. <laughs> Thanks, Layla. <laughs> Alright, so I do have an extra yellow base as well. That's for traps, but uh, of course I'm definitely not going to set off any traps, so I certainly don't need it. Because that, I find that the traps in this game are actually a bit funny. I, I joke about not setting off any traps, but actually the way the traps work in this game um, are... They're kind of... They're kind of like... You don't really set them off. Like, they don't really sneak up on you. Basically, they appear, and then you, you either have to deal with them or you ignore them, and then something else bad happens. So it's kind of like you can disarm them, in which case... Nothing bad happens. Nothing really good happens. You just disarm them. Or you don't disarm them and then later on something worse happens. Time for some mayhem. <laughs> Here we go, chat. <laughs> Am I miss I'm missing a bomber pig. No, I'm not. I'm I lied. Alright. There we go. Alright, you raglanders. Now get out of here for now. There's no one here yet. All you all y'all get out of here. And we'll catch up with you later. Altar goes away too, up there. Okay, so now we have to pick where we're gonna put the stairs. And I quite like somewhere where there's lots of rooms around. I'm thinking maybe here. So you guys will notice uh, on the uh, board here that uh, there's, well, you can see them here, actually. There are these four little symbols in every room, uh, two white ones and two gray ones. And these are going to indicate where the features in the room will appear. So in this instance, uh, if I want the stairs in this long room here, I'm going to put them down here like this. 
that go here, they're in this room that go there like that. So this is not a bad spot. This is not a bad spot. I like this spot because there's four rooms connected to it and they're not too far away. I think we can kind of... We're not going to find the altar right away, so it might even behoove us to sort of make a, a C shape and then come back to where we started. Um, if I remember correctly, the altar card goes in the quest row and activates each quest turn. Ah, Janet! Okay, that's something new to me. I thought it came out like a feature when the altar was found. Okay. Cool. So, here then. And activates each turn. Each hero may suffer one damage to change one altar die. That's actually super convenient for me that I can use that every turn. Because it basically means I can tank a damage to change from my elf into my werewolf form. Which is good. Um, and you guys can also help me with the, uh, the control of the allies because I'm I haven't actually had to do that before. I never had an ally. It's exciting. Come on, Huey, let's go. I'm going to put Huey here. I think that the four heroes start on the stairs and then allies start adjacent to them. So, me and Huey hanging out. Actually, can Huey... Huey can also open doors, right? So, the way this is going to kind of work now that we're uh, here in the dungeon is essentially like this. Uh, we're going to... Um, go around opening doors and then the doors are going to reveal monsters and features within the dungeon but i can only open one door per turn and when i pop the door open it will reveal what's inside and uh, that'll be sort of randomly generated and essentially what we're doing is we're looking for the altar which is where the urn is being kept and we're trying to find it before gert spawn spawns ideally um because otherwise we'll have to fight her and we don't really want to deal with that the, but I think that uh, I think that yeah, allies can't um, can't actually. So heroes can open one door per turn. So you can kind of only procedurally generate one room per turn. But I don't know if allies can open a door as well or not. But to activate an ally, you have to spend one of your precious actions, and we've only got three actions. So there's that as well. Okay, and with that in mind, I think I'm just going to start with this room over here. So, as a hero... Oh, I've got my four cards. My hand of four cards here. So I'll have a look at what those do in a minute. Um, but for, for now, what we've got is... Yep, at the start of your turn, you refresh all your exhausted cards, but I don't have any because I've just started playing. And I also get to do up to three actions. So I can move up to... And you can do each action any number of times. So I can do th move up to three spaces, up to three times for a maximum of nine movement, but that would be all I did. Um, usually an action has to be completely resolved before moving on to the next action, with the exception of the keywords use and exhaust, and also opening doors. All of those things can interrupt movement, but everything else you have to resolve the actions before moving on. So you got a card action, which is play, uh, resolve a, an action on a card. You've also got play a card, which is action number four there. Interact is gonna is a keyword that will appear on things as they appear in the game. Draw a card just lets us draw a card from our deck. We get to draw one at the end of our turn anyway. But as uh, Layton, who has his deck split into two halves, essentially, we might be using that quite often. Uh, rest allows us to discard supplies, which uh, you'll remember these little tokens here. In order to heal and channel we can gain a focus and change an altar die so speaking of which i should get out the altar die and roll them into their starting configuration and then yep after that we get to draw a card and we flip this over to resolve a threat villain and quest turns allies can open doors cool thanks janet that's awesomely helpful i don't know if we'll want huey to wander off and start opening doors but if i get rushed and i panic Maybe uh, maybe he'll have to do that. But I presume that allies don't have a distinct threat area. That would be, I think, a bit too much. But uh, do let me know if I'm wrong about that. But as far as I'm aware, there's only one threat area per hero. Um, and so in this game, just one threat area. Which will... It'll become apparent why that's important later on as we continue to play. What am I looking for? The altar dice. So the altar dice... 
are a set of dice that belong to the altar, and they are they display the runes of the gods. So we've got, uh, as I spoke about earlier, the fire, four elements. We've got fire, earth, uh, water. No, not water. Wind. I mean, that kind of looks like it could be earth, doesn't it? Look like it could be grass or something. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's that's water. No, that's water. That's wind. That's wind, and that's water. And then we've also got uh, sun and shadow. So those are our different elements. And um, what we're going to do is we're essentially going to roll these six dice, five dice, and then these will be present in the dungeon as sort of magical elements that can be consumed by cards. Whenever you see a card that says exhaust the card to... and has shows the symbol of an element, just like... Uh, this card here, where it says uh, exhaust sun. Actually, I can show you down here. That's probably simplest. Uh, exhaust sun, heal one and draw one. I, I, there will need to be a sun symbol in the in the pool of magical dice for me to do that. And then I'll re-roll the die once I've spent the symbol. Um, you might also see a, a version like this on the bottom of Huey. And that just means if there's a water symbol, he can just do that. Um, but I will again have to re-roll it. Every time the, the sort of the symbol is consumed, even if the card is not exhausted. Okie dokie. And I got my healing potion. And I got all my bits here, so I'm all set to start exploring. So we might as well set off. Um, oh, and I'll roll these too. Show me. Uh, what we want is shadow and sun and no earth. I see two suns. I see shadow. I also see an earth and a wind. So if we can reroll that earth, that would be good because, of course, we remember that um, on Gert's card here it says uh, each minion gains an armor token, and then she uses the earth symbol. So uh, we want to try and get rid of that if we can. So I'll put these over here on the altar because that makes sense. To me. Okay. Then we're back to it. We're into the dungeon. So I think I'll probably oh, just uh, I'll probably just head over here into this room over here, go exploring and see what's what. We can sort of loop around as we explore the dungeon and come back across here and hopefully find the alt. I mean, we're not we're gonna have to explore like seven rooms before we find the altar. We know that because we shuffled it into the bottom of that deck. Um, or five rooms. We're gonna have to explore at least five rooms. So we might as well crack on with it. Um, so, flip this and go... Oh, what do I have in my hand, actually? We've got uh, a feet card. So, feet cards are special cards. Uh, you can see here, keyword feet. It's an elf card, so I can play it, because I'm currently in elf form. And uh, the feet just means it doesn't consume one of my three actions to play. So, I can test my wisdom and for each... Or, test my faith. And for each success, I can choose a hero within range to heal the damage and gain a focus. If there's air magic, which there is, I can choose a hero within range to heal one damage and draw a card. Well, I might want to hang on to that because I haven't taken any damage yet. We've got an action card here called uh, Lose the Scent. So we can search... Is that minus one? Oh, search plus one. I guess that means I get uh, dexterity plus one, da plus one die to search here. Um... Then each hero within range may move one space and gain one armor token. Well, that might be useful to do now. Uh, and if there's a water symbol, each hero within range may move one space and gain one armor token. So Huey's not a hero. He's just an ally, so he can't use that. There's also no water. But uh, searching is always good. That's how we get search cards. And we can also find supplies that way. And supplies are useful because we can spend them to make our die rolls better. We can use them to heal. And also, at the end of the adventure, if there's any left over, we can use them to upgrade because we're playing a campaign. We've got Spot the Weakness, uh, which is a reaction card. And uh, this means we play it in response to something else. It'll tell us when to play it, which is here. Play this card before a hero within range rolls dice for an attack. Discard one armor token from the target, and the hero adds one critical to the result. That's great. You can also spend a sun magic to gain a focus. And it's got a range of four. So when it refers to range, the range is four. Cool, that's great. That's a good card. 
And we've got this on the scent card, which we can't play yet because we're not currently in our werewolf form. Oh, but who looks a good boy? Who's a good boy? Layton's a good boy. So this is another feat card, which means it doesn't cost an action. Um, and we can test dexterity and then move on space for each success we gain. Additionally, if there's earth, we can spend it to search. That would be good, actually, because we could spend the, the earth token that Gert wants. So it might even... can. Uh, we don't have to spend an action to um, change into a werewolf. So we could literally just do that right now, if we wanted, just become a werewolf. But uh, let's start by moving and seeing what's in this next room. So movement can be diagonal in this game, so we can go one, like that, and then two over to here and open the door. And that doesn't interrupt our movement, so we've got one more space of movement, but all we're going to be able to do is move into this space here, because you can't move diagonally through doors. Uh, but when we reveal a room... The first thing we do is uh, draw a feature card from the top of the deck to find out what's in the room. And so this room contains crates! Activate. A hero adjacent to this feature may gain a supply. That's great. So uh, activate is something that happens automatically when it's appropriate. But uh, we're also going to get to... We can interact to search the crates. And uh, if you do this you may discard a supply to draw search cards so we could potentially get multiple card search cards this way and that's actually great this means this is actually a really good find early on um, most features i found are helpful with the exception of one which was really unhelpful so um this is a good one to find early on though because it means we can search and get some stuff haggers that's a reach buddy but I'm going to read it out anyway. As soon as Leighton turns into a werewolf, those pigs are going to find life very unportionate. Um, Portionate? <laughs> so, then we're going to go ahead and draw a quest card. So this is going to tell us a bit about the room that we just opened. And give us some flavor text and also some extra rules, possibly. Darkened room. The darkness deepens here, obscuring what feels like watchful eyes lurking just beyond your vision. You're certain you're not alone. Regardless, answers still wait beyond, forcing you to steel yourself against the fear of ambush, still watching every shadow. So when revealed, attach this card to the room's feature, then each hero must either discard a focus or draw a lurker card. Activate. a hero. So here is a situation where we go to the lurker deck, even though the threat deck's not empty, because we've been specifically instructed to do so. And then uh, there's a special activate function here where we can draw a clue card, which is uh, very unique to the search deck because we need to find the clues to work out where the urn and the altar are in this dungeon. So I'm going to definitely discard a focus because those lurker cards can be nasty. And there's every chance we've still got to draw a threat card. There's every chance we're going to draw an enemy. And I don't want to start off by drawing two enemies. That would not be very much fun. So we attach this to the crates now that it's been resolved. The crates go over here in the quest row, and uh, they will activate in due course. So we need to find the crates. Where are the where are my crates at? They're in one of my bags. Here we go. So there we go. There's a whole bunch of crates right here in this room. But there's something else in this room, too. In the dark room, there is... A curious odor! So this is an event, which means it triggers right away. Um, I can't remember what this symbol means, so I'm going to have to look that up in a second. Um, put this in your threat area. Interact task 1. Each minion threat in your threat area gains one activate each minion threat card in your threat area gains a threat token well thank god i don't have any minions in my threat area currently and then this is going to trigger a earth symbol as well the three is progress to remove the trap okay cool well so it's not really a trap it's not a trap it's an event but yeah so i have to get three progress tokens on here and in order to get a progress token on here i have to interact as well so i actually don't have enough I don't know if I have enough... Can I get multiple progress from a single interactive? 
from a single interact. I'm going to have to double check the uh, how exactly this test is carried out, but either way, this is not ideal. So I'm going to put that up there, um, which I now realize is problematic because I can't read it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so progress tokens are these little guys here, and I have to get three progress tokens out here if I want to get rid of the, um, the curious odor. I'm going to have to do that by interacting and doing a task test. So we can check that, because I haven't actually come across the task test. This test allows a character to place progress tokens on a card. The character cancels and... Okay. It cancels... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to do a test here, looking for successes, or, you know, perhaps uh, critical hits. That'd be great, too. Um, where's the critical? There uh, it is. I lost it. There it is. Um, but essentially, I'm going to look for these. And then, it because it's task one, I'm going to have to cancel one success. And then the rest of them become progress. So in order to resolve this, I would need to test and get four successes. Uh, that would resolve it in one test. But it's very unlikely that I'd manage to get that many um, right away. Ooh. So, let's have a think here. Well... I've got, at least it's not a minion, but uh, we because there's an earth symbol here, if I don't resolve this, I'm going to have to draw another threat card, which, uh, and actually, yeah, zoom in on, well, that doesn't really help you, does it? Because there uh, there is a, yeah, I'm going to have to draw another threat card, so either I re-roll the earth symbol here, or I try to resolve this, because uh, I, I don't actually mind the activation at the moment. I'm not gonna I can't reveal well to be fair Huey could reveal a room but uh, I don't think Huey's got much movement um, Huey has I guess three movement because it doesn't say oh there we go exhaust this island may move up to four spaces and then attack so he has four movement oh and if he doesn't attack he may roll up to two altar dice that's interesting. So he could re-roll an altar die. The thing is, if he goes and explores another room right now, he's going to... Just catching up on the pig puns in chat there. Um, if he goes and explores another room, he might spawn a uh, an enemy that he's going to have to fight, or I'm going to have to fight. And then that will make the Curious Odor all that much more threatening. So... I think with this in mind, I'm just going to pop, pop my little character in here with my final point of movement. And then I'm going to have a think about my life choices. I might just try and resolve this interact. I only have, I have two intelligence inherently, so I'm only gonna get to roll two dice. And if, if I get one success, I'm gonna have to cancel one. So, um, do I have anything that can help me with this? I assume that uh, my werewolf does not have as much intelligence. No, we, we looked at this earlier. He's only got one. So becoming the werewolf is not going to help me with the curious odor. If anything, the wolf's nose will make things much worse. Um, so. Wasn't there a... Uh, all, the burning altar. Each hero may suffer one damage to change one altar die to a result of their choice. That's not all that helpful either. Because, um... I... Well, I mean, I guess I could... I mean, I could get rid of this, and then that would be fine. I quite want to go and interact with the crates, really. Because then I get to do a search. I might find something useful that way. Crackling puns. You guys. You guys need to, uh... Well. I don't... You need... Carry on. Carry on with the pig puns in chat. But I can't read them all out. I just... I can't. I've got... I've got too much here to deal with right now. I've got my own... Uh, problems. I'm trying to think of a pig pun and I failed to do it. So I just, I need to, uh, I need you to all stifle in chat a little bit. Huh? Yeah? 
<laughs> yes, Layla. <laughs> Trot on or stifle. <laughs> okay, what uh what uh what am I gonna do here? Um What is the Raglanders thing again? Before a minion with threat tokens would activate, you have to resist X where X is the number of threat tokens on the minion card. Right, that's not relevant right now, because there's no minions. Okay, so really, I either resolve the Curious Odor or I get rid of that thing. I think, if I'm going to solve my immediate problem... Um, the thing is, I can exhaust... I'm not playing to turn into the Werewolf, so I can exhaust the Crescent of Loon to re-roll roll up to two Altar Dice. Um, which I'm going to assume means I can roll... Um, up to two dice once rather than one die twice um, but uh, I think I'm gonna just start with that and see what happens so I'm just gonna exhaust that to roll this die because the rest of the symbols I'm fine with so hopefully this comes up with anything but another earth symbol it's water so that's good who do, don't I have someone that does something with water yeah that one here This gives me bonuses, actually. Oh, this actually would be very useful. Aha! So now we begin to see the game in motion. The thing is, if I use that water, I'm going to have to roll it again, and I might get the earth back. But uh, playing this card allows me to do a search plus one, then each hero within range, which is just me, may move a space and gain an armor token, and I could move an additional space and gain one more armor token. So I think uh, what I'm going to do is play this card here. And uh, so that lets me do a search, uh, dexterity plus one, so that's three, and I'll show you guys how a search works. So I'm going to roll three of these uh, skill check dice, and this is a action to play the card. So here we go. I'm going to roll here, because I think these are not going to show up on the green screen. Let's try and roll them in this purple room. Okay, so here we've got a success, a focus symbol, and a crit. So the first thing I can do, if I want, is to... Actually, no, I resolve crits first, don't I? This is on the player aid. Bear with me. It is resolve crits and then spend focus, yeah. So the very first thing I do is resolve crits by taking another die and rolling it. So I get to roll an additional die. It's basically exploding dice system. So we've got one more success there, so we've resolved the crit. The crit also counts as a success. So that's three successes. Now if I had any focus tokens, I could spend them to turn this focus into a success. But uh, I don't have any focus tokens, so instead, the c focus uh, generates a token, so I gain a focus token. So that's good. So I've got three successes, which means that uh, the first one allows me to draw a card from the search deck, and then each additional success allows me to gain one supply, which of course is useful for the reasons I outlined before. So all good. Let's go ahead and draw a card, and we're going to get two of these guys as well. And wasn't there an additional effect on the card I played? Uh, then each hero, yep, so there's a then effect, so we're going to go ahead and grab one of these. That one! I'm really hoping for a potion of intelligence to help me resolve the curious odor, but we'll have to see. So, what have we got? Blam! Potion of fortitude, oh, so close. That's good, actually, because my fortitude is rubbish. So, there we go. Potion of fortitude. We just found that uh, lying around. And what we do now is we actually put a little search token here onto the crates, because they're the feature in the room that we're in. And this makes further searches in this room slightly less likely to be successful. Um, but then I get to move a space, and I gain an armor token. So I'll move one into the room and take this armor token here. Put that down there that's useful because i have zero armor otherwise and then it says i can spend the water symbol so i'll do that to gain an additional token and move one more space so there we go and now i have to roll this and let's just hope i don't get the earth symbol right uh, touch wood my desk is made of wood this will be fine i rolled it off the table i'll have to roll that again and also i guess i'll have to be right back sorry guys. well yep sorry guys
So, I'm back, and I got Yildi Ready Steady Play Dice Tray out. Normally I roll onto the green screen, but uh, I don't think the blue dice are going to show up on the green screen, so that's why I'm rolling up here on the table. And I've rolled the flame, so that's fine. Good. Not. It's good because it's not the earth symbol. Grand, okay. So that was that was entirely successful, I think. So this card's discarded, and I have one action left. And I think I might... I'm trying to decide whether I activate Huey and try to keep him with me, or I just kind of let him hang out. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Right, I was thinking about interacting with the crates, but no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to resolve the Curious Odor. Of course, that makes perfect sense. So I'll flip this one over, and um, I'm going to grab my two dice because that is an intelligence task that we're doing here so i've got intelligence two so there we go uh what i'm gonna do i think to try and make this more spectacular is spend one supply to add an additional die it's just one supply per test so i can't add more dice unfortunately but uh, there we go that's three and i think this is going to give us a pretty good start hopefully we'll get some more exploding symbols here we'll just have to uh we'll just have to see all right here we go yeah all right not too bad we've got uh, this here which is both symbols that's so that's a success and a focus which is good we've actually rolled that twice and then we've got a focus here as well so because i know i'm going to get two focus symbols because i've got three okay sorry this is a set of focus <laughs> ha, my focus symbols are out of focus Uh, please, camera, cooperate. But, uh, yeah, so... Oh, it's so close. But, yeah, so I've got my three focus symbols here anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got one focus icon. So I can spend that to make three successes. And that resolves the three successes. And then we have two remaining focus symbols that we can't activate. So that's going to let us gain two focus tokens for future use. So that's good. That was a successful roll overall, I think. Um, so we had three successes. Because the task difficulty is one, we have to cast, uh, we have to sacrifice one success, which means that we've got two of the three we need. So we've not yet resolved this, but we're close. So we get to do, put two progress tokens on there to show that that's progress two. All right, and then I'm all out of stuff to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a card from my character deck. So run out of actions. Harrowing Howl. All right, I'm going to put my elf cards here like this. I'm going to put my wolf cards on the other side. Uh, action werewolf attack. The attack targets each enemy within range. Oh, that's epic. And it's fortitude based, so I could use my potion of fortitude to enhance it. That would be gross. I'd love that. Uh, each hero within range gains a focus. I think I actually have another five of these dice somewhere, and I just didn't burn, get them out because I don't think I needed them. When I was playing on my own, I only ever needed like two or three. But I suppose if I was the werewolf form, I would have fortitude. Where's my card? It's here. It's got armor on it now. Yeah, if I was the werewolf form, I'd have three fortitude. And then if I drank the potion, that would be five fortitude. So I'd roll all five dice, and if I got any exploding symbols, I'd need more dice. That's fun. More dice is always fun. It's always the the the, the answer to what is more fun. More dice. Okay, so uh, I drew my card, and that's the end of my turn. So I flip this guy over here to show that I am done, and this would be more helpful if... There were multiple players because then we can see who's gone and who hasn't but there aren't so moving on we're going to go to the threat turn here this is where i'm going to bring this screen up here and we're going to just go through these in order and activate the three rows and we're going to activate the cards left to right as well so we're going to start by activating the raglanders card which has no activation function on it so we can actually kind of just ignore that maybe we can even put it up well no it's important for me to remember what it does Thing. So this is going to activate where, and each minion in my threat area 
which is actually each minion in this row, would gain an armor token, but because there aren't any, nothing happens. It would also dr produce another threat card if there was a earth symbol down here, but there isn't, so that's great. So then this activates, and it says each hero must discard an armor token or resist three. So this is a resist faith check, so we're actually resisting the pig's gross smell power with faith, basically. Um, <laughs> I don't have... I don't want to do that, because for each failure... It's, it's difficulty 3, so I'd need successes to cancel the 3 out. Any leftover is just straight-up damage. Resistance ignore, Resist tests ignore armor. So let me just get rid of one of these armor tokens uh, right away um, in order to avoid doing that test. Then, again, it does something with Earth, but there's none. So we'll move into the final row, which is here. And uh, first, the search activates. So I have to discard a focus token for each clue card I have. I currently have no clue cards, so... That's fine. Then the bar burning altar activates, uh, which says each hero can suffer damage to change an altar die. Oh, maybe I want to do that. Yes, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, then it's going to use the fire down the bottom here. It says it'll use the fire to deal a damage to me, or I have to discard an armor token. So I might as well take a damage to change this into something useful now so that um, I don't have to take a damage down here because of it and then roll it. Um, I'm just having a look at my items over here. And the reason I changed it to shadow is because the light and the shadow symbols are what allow me to change back and forth between werewolf and elf. But it might be useful to actually have a water or something like that. So I'm just having a quick look at my my items over here on my uh, in my player area to see if there's anything useful I can see here. But uh, Huey can use water to change altar dice to results of his choice. That's quite useful. Um, I can actually. Uh, this says, uh, on the Mysterious Stone, it says this appears to be a piece of the altars, uh, which is neat. And it says I can cancel an altar effect, but the altar die is still rolled. So that would be really, that could, that, an altar effect is, is these kinds of effects here where we use the runes in order to do something. So, uh, that would be, that could be really clutch at some point. And then, uh, I could just let the altar change to another symbol, but not really useful right now. The bow lets me deal an extra damage if there's air. There is already an air symbol, but maybe actually setting up another air could be useful because um, I'll probably spend that pretty quickly once an enemy appears. So maybe, yeah, rather than having two shad... Well, do I want to become a werewolf quite quick? Well, I'm going to be using these quite a lot, I suspect. So let's, let's set up another air one for my bow, actually. And uh, just to uh, make a note as well of my damage there i've actually there's actually wound tokens but i've got the little d6s i've been using to track these things because uh it's it's easier than massive stacks of tokens everywhere so there we go one damage on my character <laughs> billy says these pigs hurt me in my gameplay i haven't met, come across any pigs yet billy maybe i'll manage to get through the whole dungeon and not meet a single pig wouldn't that be great so now that we've resolved the quest, uh, no, we resolved this, now we have to resolve the, um, the crates. So a hero adjacent to this feature can gain a supply. That's the activation ability of the crates. Great, good, give me those supplies. And then there's an additional effect, and this is unique to the quest. So this is quite important, actually. It says here, activate a hero adjacent to the attached feature may draw a card from the clue deck. Then if the hero takes control of the clue card, discard this card. So we're essentially searching for clues here to find out what happened to the urn um, and where it is located in the dungeon. So we got our clue deck right here. So let's go ahead and draw a card. And we're probably going to have to keep this, which means we're going to have to start paying to hang on to them. Oh, no, it's a... Uh, oh, wait, what is this? Falling debris. You may resist dexterity four to discard this card. Look at the bottom two cards of the clue deck. Choose one to resolve, and the other to shuffle back into the deck. Otherwise, discard this card and gain a focus. Ooh. 
What's my dexterity like? Two. That's not very good. I mean, it is. It's fine. Two is actually middle, and three three is incredible. Um, all my stats are one and two, basically. Um, resist four means I'm going to be taking some pain. But it would mean I'd get a proper clue card. The thing is, once we find the altar, we need to have two clues that are the same. But this is not particularly helpful right now. So I think I'll just discard this. We know that we need two clues that are the same, because it says right here on the uh, quest effect card here. Um, each hero who controls a clue must... Uh, not that one part. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I think it was on here, actually. Nope. I can't remember. Well, I just... Uh, I just uh, might have filled in this blank because... No, it says it on the clue cards. That's right. It's just because I've done this one before and I remembered that it said that. Okay, well, there ain't no much, there ain't much we can do with that, so I guess this just goes to the discard pile. And, um... We'll worry about that later. Well, I'll gain a focus token. Because basically I don't want to uh, resist four and take a bunch of damage. Especially seeing as I'll be damaging myself every time I turn into a werewolf. Alright. Now. Now, it's back to my turn. Oh yeah, and then this goes away as well, so that also goes into the discard pile. So we're going to flip that over to show that it's my turn. I'm going to get my three actions back. Any cards I have exhausted are refreshed, but I haven't exhausted any. So let's go. I think I'm just going to start by moving into the next room. Just find out what's going on because we can just go one, two into here. So let's start with that and see what happens in this room here. And then if anything super bad happens, at least we've got some time to... Uh, to do something about it, I guess. He says rather optimistically. I mean, I've got two actions left to try and deal with the pig that's going to jump out and attack me, right? That's the plan. There we go. One, two. Show me what's on the other side of this door. As we quest in the dungeon. Well, let us populate the room first with a nice feature. Which is... What is that? Blessed Fountain! Well, that can only be helpful and nice. A hero adjacent to this feature may roll one altar die. Okay, that's fine. Interact. Search. So the one means we have to be adjacent to it, basically. Uh, for each supply gain during this test, you may roll one altar die. Okay, so this lets us roll the altar dice. That's not actually all that important to me right now, because... I've kind of got the symbols I need currently, but, you know, that's fine, that's fine. So here's the, uh, the Blessed Fountain. There you go, look at that. What's going on in this room? Makeshift Vault. The enemy's vault lies ahead. Motivation surges through you, knowing that answers must be at hand. What you seek is valuable, and here's where valuables look to be kept. Now it's just a matter of finding out what exactly the enemy values. Surely we will get a clue. When revealed, attach this card to the room's feature, then each hero who does not control a clue may move up to three spaces. Oh, that's great, because I don't have a clue. A hero adjacent to the attached feature may draw a card from the clue deck. Yes, that's the same as always. We are searching for clues. Okay. So, that says when revealed, so I guess I must make my move now. And so, I shall go a one, two, three. Bearing in mind that I do have one point of movement left as well. from uh, Because I've interrupted my move to do this. But uh, now we must reveal a threat card. And it's, I'm sure it's going to be bad. It's another curious odor. I mean, this is actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie, I'm okay with that. So, 
Does this specifically say hero? What I'm wondering is, can uh, can Huey look for clues? A hero adjacent to the attached feature. Nope. Huey cannot find any clues. Huey is clueless. Damn it. Damn it, Huey, get a clue, dude. All right. That's fine. It's fine. I suppose Huey could go and explore this room over here. But no, that's not the point. The point is not to get totally spread out all over the dungeon. All right, if I want a clue, I have to be adjacent to this statue. I mean, I might as well go up here. But I don't think there's any point, really, to moving that final step. Um, and hiding behind the fountain. But I'm basically just kind of standing here getting rid of these event, these these uh, events, progress events. Which is a good thing, actually, that they've come out this way. Because it means I don't have to do this while there's a pig hitting me. Oh, I forgot to refresh my Crescent of Loon. What a fool. Um, Alright, so with two actions left... I think we should try to get rid of the first, try to get rid of the first of these uh, event cards with a second um, intelligence check. It's going to be three dice because I uh, spent a, spent a supply. Bam! So I see three successes. That's uh, that's fine. Um, that's way more than I needed, and I didn't get any focus tokens out of it, but that's okay. I'm not cross at the inefficiency. So, the uh, this curious odor is resolved, and it's sent to the discard pile. But we still have a second one to deal with, and. I think for my final action, I'm going to interact with the fountain and do a search. So. It says here, uh, for each supply gained during this test, you can roll an altar die. I'm not going to, but it's still just a search with faith. My faith is two. That's fine. But uh, I'll find some useful item and I'll gain another supply, all of which is good stuff. So let's do that for my final action. I think. Huey's just like hanging out by the stairs like, what? I said I'd come along. I didn't say I'd do anything useful. I said I'd come along. I didn't say I'd do anything useful. Thanks, Huey. Cedrin had a, had a card that allowed him to uh, add, like, extra dice and stuff to his checks. And I'm a little disappointed I haven't, um... I haven't come across any of those. Or anything like that. Or add, like, successes and things. But that's fine. Oh, nice! That's a success and a crit. Excellent. Clearly, uh, Loon wanted me to... Aluna, or whatever my god's name is, wanted me to have free stuff from the dungeon. So, three successes. There we go. So, the first one becomes a search card, and the other two become supplies. And I could reroll up to two altar dice because of the Blessed Fountain, but I'm not going to because I don't want to. I reject your Blessing Fountain. Now, give me free stuff. Yes! And also give me supplies. And my free stuff is... Discarded pack. Gain two supplies and discard this card. Well, that's fine. I'll take it. So we can have a discard up there. More supplies. I guess I have quite a lot of supplies to help me with my... Um, my issue without with not having enough um dice for my checks so that's good but thus it is now the end of my turn i shall draw one card which is ah another copy of loon's elusive grace the feat that allows me to heal and gain focus this is also useful and thus we proceed to first the what is this going on the way over there Thus we proceed to first the threat row, whereupon we shall activate the curious odor, which currently has no effect, so that's good. And then we're going to go down to Gert's row here, where I must discard an armor token or resist three. 
So I think I'm going to discard that armor token again. Um, that's my last one, so I'm going to figure out how to get more of these, or else start rolling that resist. And that's it for now. Do I not have to... Oh, I have to reveal villain events. What am I doing? I should have revealed two event cards for the villain uh, each turn. I'm such a moron. This is, uh, this is last turn's card. I'll do two. Uh, event. Each character must resist three with fortitude. Uh, each character must add two to the difficulty if there are more enemies than characters in their room. Fortunately, this wouldn't have had an effect last turn um, because there were no enemies. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about the villain cards. I was like, this seems easier than it was last time. Why is this easier? My bad. Here we go. So, we're resisting three. Fortunately, it's just resist three. Uh, it's fortitude, actually, which is just one. So... Unfortunately, I've got one die, and I don't think I had my Potion of Fortitude when I would have drawn this. Did I? No, I did. I definitely had the Potion of Fortitude. The question is, would I have used it? Um, no, but I think I would have spent a Supply. So let's get rid of a Supply here and roll two dice. Ha! Alright, so we've got another... I'm getting loads of crits. This is great. I never get this many crits. Ha! Huh. So there we go. Three successes and a focus symbol. So I have avoided damage and I've gained one focus symbol as well. So this is of course important as well to um, to note because when we run out of cards in this deck, that's when the enemy appears. So I'll do a second card now. This is the... We're now caught up to this turn's cards, which is... The Pungent Aura event. Each hero must test three intelligence. Each hero who fails must discard a supply or suffer a damage. Alright, so I think for this one... The thing is, I don't think it's worth spending a supply. Because if I fail, I have to spend a supply. So I might as well try to pass with my two dice. And then if I fail, I just get rid of the supply and guarantee I don't have to take a damage. Although, to be fair, a supply can heal you for two, so maybe it's better to take one damage. But what I'm thinking is that uh, that costs an action, and time is of the essence before Gert shows up and starts wailing us on us with those trotter maces. So here we go. Show me, once again, my um, um, critical. More criticals. <laughs> this gross green smoke going up the nostrils here. That does actually look a little bit like uh, Leighton, doesn't it? That face. Yeah! Oh my god, another crit. That's awesome. <laughs> this is so much fun. I never had any crits when I was playing on my own. Thanks, chat. This must be because of you. Here we go. One more. Oh, look at that! There's actually a lot of successes on these dice. Which is, uh, so it's really more about getting the right dice. There's only, like I said, there's only one focus symbol. Um, and then there's a double symbol as well. So, I actually, I think it's clever to give you less dice, but they're very likely to be successful. Because it just makes you feel good. Um, in any case, we've successfully, uh, passed the test, so we don't need to worry about that either. If you all have been watching my streams, you know I've been very unlucky with dice recently, so I like to think this is the law of averages averaging out. But I'm going to touch wood, because I think I just tempted fate. Alright, cool. So, um, I will remember to draw the villain card um, going forward. And then finally, it's the quest turn, where we're going to go through and activate these things here. So we start by activating the search. I don't yet have a clue card, so I don't have to do anything with that, but I'm hopefully about to get one. So now I can uh, suffer damage to change a die if I want. I'm not going to. The bottom effect doesn't come into effect because there's no fire. Uh, nothing happens with the crates because there's no one in that room adjacent to them anymore. So now we're going straight over to the Blessed Altar. When that activates, each hero adjacent to the feature may roll an altar die. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm happy with the dice as they currently are. Uh, but I am going to activate this bottom part, which is draw the top clue of the clue deck. And then if I take control of that, I will get rid of this. Chances are I'm going to take control of it, so I'm preemptively taking the card away, but I may not. So let's have a look. It is Ripped Fabric. A clue! 
When revealed, you may take control of this card. While adjacent to the altar, you may discard this card along with another ripped fabric to place a quest token on the quest rules card. So, this is what I was talking about before. Now that I now I've got this, I need to find a second part of this clue, another piece of ripped fabric, and then I can complete the mission. So, that's going to be the other thing that we're doing. And of course, that means that we're going to have to wander around and find that. Uh, or whatever. We're basically just going to have to... I'm crossing my fingers here. We're basically just going to have to keep collecting clue cards, and then we're going to wind up taking damage for possessing them, essentially. But that's uh, the end of the row, so we're back to uh, this. And I don't have anything exhausted, so let's get a move on. I think we're just going to run into the next room and see what's in there. Eh. Yes, continue to explore, tiny elf man. But lest any pigs appear, they shall become food for werewolf. A weapons rack. A hero adjacent to this feature may deal one damage to an enemy in this room. Oh god. I think falling onto a weapon rack would be just the worst. That'd be awful. Like, so dangerous. It's like falling into a bucket of knives or something. Ugh. Alright, interact. For each supply token gained during this test, deal one damage to an enemy in this room. Great, well I think we should run up to this and use it to attack the enemy in this room. Presuming an enemy even appears. First, a quest card. The Swirling Mist. Someone or something doesn't want you finding what you're after. An arcane shroud hangs heavier and heavier, and now visible mists coalesce around you, trying desperately to sway you from your cause. You know you're on the right path when such resistance is blocking your path. Now it's just a matter of enduring the mystical tricks thrown up against you. When revealed, attach this to the feature card and then roll all the dice in the altar pool. Oh, for God's sake! I'm going to have to go back to that blessed altar now. Um... Here adjacent to the attack, yeah, and that's the same text as always. So, great, good, here we go. Man, I had all my perfect symbols lined up. I can become a werewolf, I can become an elf again, I can trigger my bow a bunch of times. Oh, all right, here we go. Roll all the same symbols, please. Yes, re roll them all into the same symbols. Yeah, uh oh, I see one earth symbol. That's bad. We need to get rid of that. We've got a fire symbol. That's also not great. The altar's going to burn us. The water symbol is good. And then we've got two shadow symbols. So we can still become werewolf. But we can't turn back in, into an elf. So. We shall have to see. Um, we'll have to do something about some of those symbols, I think. We might want to activate um, Huey, actually. Because he can reroll two of them. Of course, knowing my luck, he'll reroll the earth into fire. And the fire into earth. Or both of them into Earth. Um, in any case, time for a threat card. Is it an enemy yet? Blam! No, it is a feeding trough. Trigger. Each minion threat card gains one threat token. Interact task. So this is a, this is a trap, essentially. You see it says a trap keyword there. And we have to run in and get rid of it. Or else uh, it's going to give threat tokens to the minions. Which produces armor on them i think isn't that what they do uh no we have to resist x where x is the number of threat tokens on them so it basically makes them stinky and then we take damage because they are stinky um each minion threat card gains one threat token each hero with no minion threat card in the threat area draws a threat card okay so i really don't like that bottom bit either so let's go ahead and set up this room and this is the green trap actually which is you couldn't tell because of the green screen but there is a green bar across the middle that shows this is the green trap so let us first get the weapons rack here it is in this bag all right so the weapons rack you can see actually just takes up two spaces so it takes up the two white spaces leaving the gray spaces empty and now we can find our trough we have a little 3d uh, bits for all the traps thanks to kickstarter Eh. 
Oh, the tray is very secure. Damn it. I don't know what this is. It's some kind of explosion, but that's bad. Explosion? Is it fire? Is it an explosion of gore? Crystal tree? Who knows? Here's what I know, though. It doesn't look good. This guy also looks really dope. Like, I don't know who this guy is, but he looks like bad news as well. Like, yes, I've come to uh, heal what ails you. With my surgeon's staff. All right, come on, Trough. Get out of there. What's the point of going to the gym if you can't get... There we go. This is the Trough miniature. It's just a little box full of gunk. All right. And this is the green one, so it gets a green base. And then we must put it in the room adjacent to the feature but in the position as close to the hero as possible. And adjacent includes diagonal, so that means it's going to be here. Um, as far as I can tell. Oh god, now I have so much stuff to progress. Look at all this stuff I have to progress. And it would be in the room with the altar that... with the weapon rack that hurts people. There's no one to hurt in this room. Okay, uh, I have one more space of movement, so I shall move up to here. Okay, do I have any cards that allow me to move? I do not. Oh, well, yes, I do. I have On the Scent, the werewolf card, but I don't really want to use that right now because I guess I should deal with this altar. What I don't really like about this altar is the uh, the bottom part that says uh when it activates um each hero with no minion threat card in their threat area draws a threat card i don't like that um and that's just going to keep activating for the rest of the game so it is an interact task though and there's no difficulty on it this might, it might be werewolf time, guys. I think we're just going to turn into a werewolf and eat the pig's trough of shit. Uh, sorry for swearing. Um, I don't actually even, there is shadow over here, actually. Oh, but I forgot about the altar dice. Damn it. Damn the stupid fire and the stupid earth. What does the earth do again? Each minion gains an armor token. That's fine, there's no minions. Um... Oh, but there's a draw threat card on the Curious Odor. Right. But I can exhaust the loon. Okay, so we're going to exhaust the Crescent of the loon to re-roll two dice. I'm going to re-roll these two. Okay, that's great. That's way better. Sorry, I didn't get the tray out there. I hope you guys can... See. I think these ones are okay because they're colored. So, now I'm going to exhaust my Latent Pines to become oh, the, the werewolf man Blah! yes okay and that costs I take a damage um, and I must spend a shadow die as well so I'm actually going to have to roll this one as well ooh yeah okay it's water that's fine we've got lots of water um, nothing except... Well, I have stuff that uses water, but it's actually just Huey. Huey can do stuff with water, apparently. But, most importantly, I guess, is that I cease to be, um, tiny little elf man, which you can't even see because he's hiding behind the door. But he goes away, and he's replaced by scary werewolf man! Ah, with eight abs! Blah! And he's gonna murder this, uh, pig's trough. Um, and because that's an exhaust ability, it doesn't cost an action. Exhaust and use keywords don't cost actions, which is great. Because um, now I need to spend this token just to move to the tr t t over here. 
and I'm going to move two so that I'm actually adjacent to the uh, the the um, feature as well because then I can search it for clues even though I'm terrible at all of these things now that I'm a werewolf and I must remember that I my bow now becomes claws uh, Huey now becomes very scared and my crescent of loon actually also flips although it is exhausted so that's fine um, and I do have three fortitude but I actually think that um, I might use my fortitude potion as well. As much as I want to save it for a massive attack, I don't really want to... Um, I don't think three is going to get me to four. Maybe, with the, all the focus as well. Oh, I don't want to overkill. Yeah, do you know what? Maybe let's just use a supply, actually. And get four dice. I think four dice should be sufficient, especially seeing as I have all these focus tokens. Um, he said, tempting fate. <laughs> Things are about to get worse for wear. You're absolutely right, Hagers. Things are about to get bad for this, uh, bad for this, uh, Pake's trough. That's for sure. Here we go. Yeah! Ooh, so that's three successes and one focus. So that was close, but uh, fortunately I can add my uh, focus symbol here to turn it up to four. Thus, we have gotten rid of the pig's trough, which is good because it sucks. So it goes over there in the discard pile, and I believe it comes off the board as well. Goodbye. Be gone. Awful thing. And unfortunately, that's all my actions. That was an interact action there, so I'm all done. And that's my turn. Um, if I have any more use uh, things I could uh, do, or things to exhaust, um, I could do that. I don't have anything else I want to do, so... It looks like we're... Oh, I forgot to flip this over last time. But we're going to draw a card, and then we're going to go back to... The threat turn. So we've got uh, Lose the Scent. Another copy of Lose the Scent. Oh, this is a good one. This got me armor. And actually, I do need more armor, but I will have to turn back into Elf to use that. And I don't know. Now that I'm a werewolf, I kind of want to be a werewolf for a little while and see if there's, like, some some thing I can murder. It seems only um, only appropriate to uh, to murder something while I'm a big, scary werewolf. Ah! It'd be a shame not to do any murdering. Before we turn back into a boring elf. Ah, werewolf. Werewolf time. Let's get him. Okay, let's start with uh, the threat. So what we've got is Curious Odor, which activates. There are no minions in the threat area, and also there's no earth symbols. So fortunately, uh, nothing happens um, with the Curious Odor, which I do need to get rid of, though. And then we're going to go over to Gert, who says that uh, you must discard an armor token or resist three. I don't have an armor token, so I'm going to have to resist three. So this is with faith. Um, I've only got... F I've got faith two. So I think I'm just going to bite the bullet and uh, roll the dice on this one. Oh, that's no good at all. All right, so I've got one faith symbol and one one focus symbol and one uh, success. I think I'll spend a focus symbol, uh, taking me down to two, so I take one damage as well. That ticks up to three, so we're on nine health left. That's fine, though. I'm sure that we will. Well, we've got our health potion as well to help us out, and I don't think we get to keep these between campaign sessions, although I'm not sure. But maybe we'll drink it just in case. Um, right. So we've resolved this. There is again no earth, so we don't need to worry about that. So now I need to draw a card. Blam! Spreading stench. Uh, this is the first card we saw, so we're going to have to resist three. And it becomes more difficult if there's enemies. We haven't... We've been lucky. We're going to spend the second half of this game. Nothing but enemies popping up. So far, all we've had are traps and events. But... Uh, in any case, we're going to be resisting three. We actually have fortitude three, so I think we're in quite a good place to deal with this. Go 
because we're in werewolf mode. Yeah. Ah, okay, so we got one focus symbol, but we've also got the critical symbol as well, and a success. So we get to roll, throw another die. God, these are not in great focus. Sorry about that. Maybe they're better up here? Yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? Slightly. Yeah! Another crit! Do you know what that means? We get to roll another die. This is outrageous. I need to get my the rest of my dice out of the box. Oh my god, another crit. Um, <laughs> okay, well I guess I'm just going to take a focus token and reroll this one so I don't have to wander off and get the rest of the dice. <laughs> okay, it's a success. That's way too many successes. That's awesome. I really wish I'd been doing something more important. <laughs> that's amazing! I, I'm, that's amazing. Okay. I need to save this for Dice Throne. Um... Okay, so, yeah, so we take nothing, and that's discarded. And now we're going to go down to um, handling the bottom row here. Let me go and uh, just move this around a little bit. Ah! Okay, that's fine. So, uh, first we're going to activate this. I now have a clue card, so I must either... Uh, discard a focus for each clue card I control, or else resist three using intelligence. Uh, I'm currently a dumbass werewolf with intelligence one, so uh, I think I'll just give a focus token to avoid this check. So that's good that I can do that. And then uh, the burning altar uh, doesn't have an effect currently. I can take a damage to change a symbol, but I'm not going to. Uh, the Blessed Fountain, there's no one in the room, so now we're going to activate the Weapon Rack, so I can do a damage to an enemy, there's no enemies in the room, but what I can do is draw another clue card and see what we get. A torn map. Well, I mean, I might as well keep this one because I'm going to need to find... This is exactly the same as the ripped cloth, it's just a different thing. So in order to find the... the earn, I need two matching clues, and that's the real clue. So, let us uh, hang on to that, but that of course means now I'm going to have to start resisting the search damage or else discarding more of these tokens, focus tokens. Um, so we might need to play a card to get more focus tokens, I'm not sure. I do have a lot of cards that I haven't played yet. Um, but that's fine. Let's, uh... Ooh, I can do a search with an Earth symbol. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. But, uh, let's, uh, this means this one's discarded because we took control of the blue card. And we're moving on. Back to my turn. So this flips over. This sun exhausts. These all go blue again. And we're back to it. Alright. Let us continue our search. So it's one, two, three, four to get over here. So I'm thinking about... I'm thinking about going into this room. But any feature that appears is going to be all the way down here, and that's very far away. Then again, if I go into here, any feature that appears is going to be all the way over here, which is also far away. I can't believe we've done three rooms, and I haven't even shown you guys how enemies spawn yet. Um, I'm very far away from things. I also note that I haven't put a search token on either of these two items. And actually, this one's search characteristic is might so it might be useful to interact with the uh, the weapon rack before i leave see if i can find some more useful stuff because it searches with the might characteristic and in werewolf form i have three might i won't be able to deal damage to the enemies in the room because there are none but that's kind of okay uh, so let's go ahead and start with that um because supplies are useful and everything else and then i think um Maybe we'll find something that will help us 
I don't know, do something useful. Maybe? I don't know. Let's find out. Here we go! Okay, so we got two successes and a focus. Um, I think I'm happy with that, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, one search card and one supply and one focus token. There's no maximum number of supplies you can have, but you are limited to five focus tokens. But that's fine, because I've only got three. So here's a card from the search deck as well. What we got? Show me something useful. Eyes in the dark! Draw one lurker and discard this card. Well, that's bullshit. I didn't know that was in there. How dare they. Do you guys want to see an, how an enemy spawns? Hey, does this mean I can deal damage to it? Because it spawns before I deal damage by gaining supplies. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. Because I want to. Garglaw! Minion. Uh, movement 6. Engages. Inflicts damage. It does more damage. Ah, oh, this guy's nasty. And he spends my shadow. I suggest we murder him. Murder him quickly. So, there is, on the board here, in every room, in fact, a crack in the floor. You can see it here, you can see it here in this room, and you can see it here in this room. Every square has a crack, every room has a crack in it, and the enemies come out of the cracks. So, here's the gargoyle, he's... Like, eh, I'm gonna get you, and I'm made of stone. And I come with a plinth. The plinth is the real enemy. Um, and that's basically how that works. And he goes into the threat area. I forgot about the curious odor. That's gonna give him threat tokens. But I don't think that... Is that really gonna matter? Oh no, exactly right, Billy. Alright, so anyway, I get to um I get to take this supply token, and so that's fine because what that means is that I can uh deal one damage to him. So that's a start. He's got one armor, so he's he's got one armor and five health, which means he's he's tough, but not outrageous. Be tough. So I'm just trying to think how I want to do this. I am disappointed that this has happened. <laughs> now I have to waste time dealing with this gargoyle. I could just run away. Um, and then he'd just follow me, but... I also forgot about the Curious Odor. I do need to deal with that as well. And I don't really have the intelligence to do it as a, as a werewolf. So, I think for the sake of space, and also because it doesn't make any difference whatsoever, I'll consume the healing potion to heal the three... Well, to heal the three damage... The only reason I would hesitate is if I can keep this between campaign sessions, but I don't think I can. So I might as well spend it, but um, let's leave it for a minute. And if chat, you know the answer to that, let me know. Um, I don't want to go all the way over there and attack him. What's the attack like on my bow? This has got range, doesn't it? So attack with dexterity. My dexterity is two... Wind deals an extra damage. He's got four health left, because he's taking one damage, but it's effectively five, because he has an armor. And...
the, we do have this Harrowing Howl card. So this is a range of three, which means we wouldn't have to move to attack him. Attack with Endurance. This attack targets each enemy within range. That's the bummer. It's got an AoE effect. On the other hand, I don't know how many times we're going to actually have to... Uh, I suppose what we could do, if we're feeling risque, is run into the next room, and then um, if we spawn an enemy, uh, let them engage me and use my Harrowing Howl to try and kill them both at once. Uh, yeah, the uh, there's a lot of damage on the Gargoyle. Inflict 5, and um, Inflict 5 is a lot. And it's also Dexterity, although my Dexterity is 2, which isn't great. Um, Inflict 4 is pretty bad as well. Um, and basically, what he's going to do is he's going to move and then try to use Inflict 5. He's got movement 6 and range of 2, so he's quite close range, but he's not combat. He's not melee. Uh, but uh, Inflict is when an enemy attacks you, basically. And so he's going to Inflict 5, or he's going to Inflict 4 and move twice. So, it's not great. Yeah, he's pretty deadly, actually. Um, I'm going to use my harrowing howl. Howl do you do? You're dead now. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's probably the best thing to do is just to... Um, just to get him with the uh, the howl, really, and move on with my life. As much as it feels like a bit of a, a bit of a, a it w as much as it would be nice to use the AOE effect of it, I don't think that that's. I think it would be much riskier to try and orchestrate that. I suspect this could kill him. I think we should use the harrowing howl, plus one supply token to hit him with four dice, and I think that'll take care of him. That's my feeling. So, we're going to flip a action to play the card. It's got range three on it, which is fortunate because it's one, two, three to the enemy. So, just within range. And we attack him with our fortitude. And discard the card. So, we're going to... Fortitude is three. We spend a supply token to get four dice. Here we go. Show me a great roll. Show me a gargoyle killing roll. Oh, that's amazing. We've got four successes. But one of them's a crit. Awesome. Yeah. Ah, five successes. Gargoyle is very. Uh, uh, my scream is so loud, it shatters stone. And he breaks down into pieces and dies. And when you kill a minion, you get a supply. So that's good. Wait, you also get a supply for disarming a trap. I think you also get a supply for disarming a trap, in which case I should probably have one more. Um. If anyone knows in chat, let me know, and I'll take another, take another one. Anyway, Gargoyle, you're done for now, so get out of here. Bye. Okay, now with one action left, do I explore a room? Oh, I can't even reach a room. Yes, I can, but only the green room. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Janet. Janet says you get one supply for disarming a trap. Yeah, I didn't... I've, like, I've been sort of... It's been peculiar. My other playthroughs, my other two games of this, I've not come across, like, any traps. One, two, three. Well, actually, that's not true. I come, came across the muck spears when I was fighting the frocks. But I didn't actually disarm it. I just ignored it. <laughs> Okay, so I moved three. And the question is now, am I going to stay in werewolf form or go back to elf form? 
because the thing is, um, because uh, if I if I I've got this check here, I'm gonna have to resist three with my puny intelligence. Um, I've also got all these elf cards to use as well. Um, I actually think it's it's probably time to turn back into an elf, unfortunately, for now. So we're going to exhaust this card. We gain a focus when we become an elf. And we're also going to have to roll this die. So these are going to swap back over to our use, useful sides. I assume they retain whether or not they're exhausted. We should have become elf boy. And roll this die. Please do not become... Um, what's the word here I'm looking for? Please do not be a... Um, uh, Earth symbol. Ah, it is sun symbol. It has remained sun symbol. That's good. It's actually worked out well. Um, and so now what we can do is... Uh, we can actually play this card. Uh, because it's a feat... So this means we can uh, test our faith. So feats do not cost an action. So that's good. Uh, we can test our faith for each success. We can heal a damage or gain a focus. Um, if there was water, we could also do, do an additional thing. There isn't any water, and I don't really fancy rolling to try to... Uh, Oh, actually, though, draw a card would be really good. Okay, let, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let's actually use Valerie's message here, which I know you guys can't read. Bear with me two seconds. Come on. I know you can do it, screen. There we go. So we can discard a focus to change one alter die to a result of our choice. So what we'll do is we'll exhaust this. I'll just turn it upside down to remind me it's exhausted. You're supposed to tap them, but I'm short in space. Uh, and I'll spend a focus to change one of these waters into an air. Now I can use this, so we're going to start by testing for our faith, which is uh, two as an elf. It's two as a werewolf as well, I think, so all the same kind of thing. But we can't use this card when we're a werewolf. Okay, so we've got two successes there, which means that we can heal a damage or gain a focus for each one. So I'm going to heal two damage. So, uh, no, I'm going to heal one damage and then gain a focus. I think that's makes me feel good because then I'm going to spend this air symbol to uh, heal an additional damage so I'll go back just down to one damage and draw a card and then I have to roll this again and if it's an earth symbol I'm going to have to try and do something about that please don't be earth symbol it's shadow symbol hey that's good that's more werewolf power for us good job alter I'm doing well Okie dokie, and this card is discarded, and we've drawn a werewolf card. Lunarin Resilience. Action. Ongoing. Play this card on yourself. Use. Heal three damage and gain a focus. So use means you discard it from play. Um, you can also exhaust it to spend a shadow to heal one damage. That's cool. I presume that, because ongoing cards are in play until you use them. So essentially, the exhaust ability will have as long as we don't use the card, and then we can use the card, discarding it from play for the, the better effect. But I don't know if we lose ongoing cards when we become a uh, elf. I Thematically, I want to say yes. Thematically, I want to say that uh, we can't have this card in play ongoing when we're an elf. But... Um, I definitely don't have any clarification on that. Does it say... What did it say on my player box? I think it just said you can't play werewolf cards. I don't think it said you can't um, have them in play. But... Uh, while Layson is in elf form, you can only play and resolve. While Layson is in werewolf form, you can only play and resolve. So possibly I can actually keep it in play. I just can't resolve it. It doesn't say you can only 
like that because resolve is very specific i think resolve means utilize so i would argue that i can keep the card in play in the ongoing area the whole time but i can only use the use effect or the exhaust effect while i'm a werewolf and i can't obviously play it until i am a werewolf anyway that's that that makes sense to me uh based on that it's it. um and welcome to the chat chris okay uh chris z um who's catching up on the show right all right i think that's it i think that's all i'm gonna do this turn so it's time for oh i get to draw another card because it's the end of my turn it's another spot the weakness well those will be really useful when i fight some enemies to kill so flip this over time for the threat turn uh this does nothing so moving on to the villain's turn i must either discard an armor token or resist three i cannot discard an armor token because i have not one armor token so it looks like we're resisting three blam i see three successes very good And then we're going to draw one villain card to resolve, which is Trail of Refuse. Each hero must either discard a supply or use dexterity to resist four. Oh my god, I will discard a supply. Resist four sucks. Okay, trying not to look at how many cards are left there, but I don't like every time I have to remove one. Okie dokie, and uh, that is the villain's row, so now we're into this row here. I must discard two um, focus or resist three. So we're going to do the resist three. This is intelligence, which is why we turned back into an elf. So I don't really want to discard on the focus. Blam! Okay, I see two successes and one focus symbol. So I'm thinking... Spend another focus. And that's three successes. Alright, do we have any more tests to do? The altar's not doing anything. I could take a damage to set up a air symbol. Oh, lose the scent is very useful because of the water symbols. So I kind of want to keep those around. Um, I think I'm okay for now. I, found, I don't think I want to do that. Um, Blessed Fountain, we're not in the room. Weapons Rack, we're not in the room. I'm just going to stack these up over here oh wait we are in the room of the blessed fountain but we're not touching it so i uh, hear adjacent to this may roll an altar die well we're not adjacent to it so that's fine so nothing further to do over there we're back to the hero's turn so flip that over three of these we shall unexhaust anything that's exhausted which is just valerie's message and we're good to go so i think let's just start by uh, probably running into the running into the next room um can i reach it no the answer is no well the blessed fountain doesn't have any investigation tokens on it because i didn't do a search in here so i think this might be a good time to play um play lose the scent because it'll let me do a search it'll let me gain two armor tokens because there's a water symbol and move two spaces so i can make some progress through the room and get a bunch of stuff so let's do that so we're going to start by doing a search check which is dexterity plus one so that's a total of three which is good so here we go yeah okay i see three successes and two focus symbols so, I do want supplies, but I also want focus. Um, oof, that is tough, that's tough. Because I really want supplies, because that's how I level up. Let's do it. Let's spend two focus tokens, get five successes. I know it's crazy, I'll have no focus left, and then what am I going to do? But I'll probably lament the fact I have no focus. But I do have... Uh, this feat that gives me focus back um and you can never you can only have five focus but you can never have too many supplies so that's going to give me one search card and four supplies and supplies that you roll more dice and more dice is more fun shit 
Show me something good. Show me something good. Show me something that's not a surprise lurker. Ancient scroll. It's transparent. Change up to two altar dice to results of choice. Or exhaust it to roll an altar die. Oh, that's great. That's actually really useful for me. Being like a weird elf. There it is. It's blue magic. I don't know why the green screen hates this blue. Alright, grand. So I shall put this down here in my little kit of things. That I've, I've got too many things going on. It's always good. And then when I may move a space up to here and gain one armor token. Yes, please. And then I can spend this water magic to move one more space over here and gain another armor token. Yes, please. And then we must roll this die. No earth symbols, please. Oh, no. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, that's fine. I'll just figure out something to spend this on. Or re-roll it using my ancient scroll that I just found. We have... We have means to solve this problem. Um, and to play that card was incidentally one action. So, we show you... Huey, you are completely useless. I keep forgetting you're here. All right, I'm going to flip this one over to uh, now do a movement. I'm going to go one, two, and open this door. We need to get on with our search. We've got to find the urn. God darn it. Show me where the urn is. Please show me where that urn is. I need to find that urn. I'm desperate for the urn. All right, what do we got in this room? We have... Bah! A mystical mirror! Each hero adjacent to the mirror can gain an armor token. Yes, please. We can interact to search the mirror, and for each supply token you gain during this ser search, gain an armor. Oh, that's search with um, willpower. I'm not, I'm not good at that, but I'm not bad at it. Great. Where is the magical mirror? The magical mirror is here. And it looks like that. But there's more to this room than just a magical mirror. There's also... Prepared defenders! I don't like the sound of that. Even before pushing the door open, you hear the sounds of preparation and battle shouts. The rattle of weapons or armor soon follow. The rattle of weapons or armor. We're not sure. It's possibly weapons. It's possibly armor. It's definitely bad. The advantage is lost. However, there's nothing you can do but continue on. Attach this card to this room's feature. Each enemy drawn when revealing this room gains two armor tokens. Oh, that sucks. Okay, well, now is a good time for another trap. Oh, I forgot to deal with the curious odor. Oh, I need to deal with the curious odor. Oh, I totally forgot to deal with the Curious Odor. I should have done that. It would have slowed me down. It's fine. I'll be fine. It's all fine. I'm sure this threat card is going to be fine and not a minion. Oh, it's a minion. God damn it. <laughs> he finally shows up at the worst possible time. It's the Bomber Guy! Raglan Burner. So he's got one armor, two armor tokens, and six health. What? This is an outrage. Engage, inflict five. Dexterity. If there's earth, inflict four and gain a threat token. All of this is awful. I hate everything that's happening right now. Okay. Um, okay. That's fine. We're just we're just gonna figure it out. It's not a problem. I'll just become a werewolf and eat him. Um, it's only he's only little. Look, he's only wee. Look, he's very small. And the natural we all we've all seen the. Big bad wolf and all that. The natural predator of these things is wolves. <sighs> okay. So, I'm going to put my magic mirror over here. 
I'm going to put my, my raglan guy over here. I'm going to give him two of the armor tokens. And I'm going to quietly sob um, and have a drink of coffee. What's his movement? Four. I'm thinking I could just leave. I mean, he's all the way up in the corner there. I could go over here. What's his range? His range is five, actually. He'd reach me in no problem at all. Okay, basically I have one action left. I can probably get rid of this by using the ancient scroll. So the question is, okay, wait. So we probably want to use spot the weakness here because it adds a crit. Um, I don't think we'll kill him even with the crit, but if we can kill him, let me think here. So I'm attacking with dexterity, which is two. I could also become werewolf, but then I would have to move and I can't move and attack. I actually have one more space of movement as well. So I guess I go into the room. I mean, I have to, really. I have to check the mirror for clues. So I suppose we are going to go into the room. Because um, I do need to get adjacent to the mirror to check it for clues. Uh, so we are in this space. I mean, I really want to... I really want to um, become a wolf, but I don't think it's useful right now because, I mean, I want to become a wolf because it's cool and awesome and I want to eat the pig, but I don't think it's particularly useful right now because I don't think it's going to help me. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, um, I guess I can use the ancient scroll um, to set up some symbols that I like and then attack him for the best I can do. So I think let's just do that. I mean, we need, oh God, he's, we need nine damage to kill him, which is so not going to happen, but we can try our very bestest. I have so many things and actually, I can use uh, the I can use the mysterious stone to cancel an altar effect as well, uh, as a one-off. So that's that's really very useful too. So the the mysterious stone is going to be useful. Um, Huey is basically pointless. <laughs> Thanks, Huey. But uh, we are going to use Spot the Weakness as well, uh, which gets rid of one of his armor tokens and adds a crit. So that's amazing, actually. So here's what I think we're going to do. We're going to start by just using the consumable scroll. Just uh, We'll just consume it, and it's discarded to the search deck discard pile. To change this into air and this into sun because these are the ones I want for this particular endeavor. And then I'm going to flip this to attack him with my bow. And that lets me play Spot Weakness, which I can do because it's a reaction card. And as we know, this means I can trigger it when the window is, and the window is when you're performing an attack, or when a hero within range 4 is performing an attack. And of course, we also know that uh, uh, my bow is range 5, so I'm well within range to shoot this, this pig. Um, and so it says here that uh, play this card before you attack, roll a die uh, before you roll the dice for the attack. We start by discarding an armor from the pig, so we get rid of one of the two armor tokens. And then we can add one critical to the result as well. So that's good. So I'm going to attack with two dice because I have two dexterity, but uh, I'm going to spend a supply to add another die. And I had another plan as well. Um, 
No, I think that's it. I've got these. Um, so I can spend the sun to add a focus to my pool, which is great because I don't actually have any. Thanks to spot the weakness, that's an additional effect on it. So that's why we went ahead and got that. So we gain a focus. But I have to reroll this symbol here now that I've spent it. Okay, that's fine. Shadow's fine. All right, so here we go. Now, what we want to see here are lots and lots of crits, ideally. That'd be great. I mean, I don't think we're going to kill him, but we'll do our best. Yeah! No, damn it. Well, we've got one success, two success, and a focus symbol. We get to add a critical result, thanks to Spot the Weakness, which means we can roll one more die. Another crit, please. Nope, but we did get the double symbol. So that's an additional success and another focus symbol. So I'll spend a focus, which adds a success. So that gives us one, two, three, four, five successes. And then uh, we actually get a focus symbol back from the unused focus symbol. So that's five successes, which means that uh, the pig will take one, uh, da reduce it by one thanks to his armor here, which you guys can't really see, but he's got an armor of one. So he reduces the five down to four, and then we remove his armor token um, that he had on his card, taking it down to three. So he takes a total of three damage, leaving him with three health. However, I can also spend the wind symbol to add an additional damage on the bow. So, and that exhausts the bow. Which is fine because I can't use it for anything anyway, but that takes him down. It takes four damage in total, taking him down to two health remaining. If only I could do something to do two damage, but I can't. Unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, come on. Um. I must have something that deals with this. I have so many things. So many things. Well, I can cancel the altar effect with a mysterious stone, actually. I can also exhaust this and spend my focus to gain a result of my choice. Or I can just exhaust this to reroll up to two. Um... I'm going to get attacked by this pig and it's going to suck. It's going to suck real bad. But I think it's better to wait. I'm going to lose all my armor, though, and that's going to be the worst, because I need that armor for that. Damn it. But I need to get rid of this. So, I really wanted to use this, actually. Exhaust to heal a damage and draw a card. Just to have another card, because card draw is nice. But I think I shall... Um... Oh... Uh... could do this actually we could do this okay here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna combo stuff no but i don't need all this healing oh, i'm just not gonna have any focus and it's gonna suck i'm just gonna take a big hit so i'm gonna tap this to uh spend this to turn that into a sun so that it's not earth. I'm actually about to spend it again, so I'm basically just banking on the fact that I'm not going to roll another earth here. But, um, that's what it's like sometimes. And then I'm going to exhaust this to heal and spend the sun to heal one and draw a card, because I want more cards, basically. Oh, please don't have, a, please don't have an earth symbol. On it, please. 
that's fine. Water's fine. I knew it'd be fine. I knew it'd be fine. We're all fine here. Thanks. So we heal one. We can get rid of that and draw a card. This be a good one. Ah, on the scent. Another werewolf card, which I have not used. Might be time to turn back into a werewolf and eat some bacon. But next turn, because I'm all out of stuff we can do. So I can draw another card. Um, tearing fangs. Uh... Ooh, that's brutal. So you can do a second attack after your first attack. Er, nice. So, that's it. Over to the enemy's turn. So, we're going to start with... Uh... Oh, God. A lot of this stuff is going to trigger where it wasn't triggering before. Uh, so, first off, each minion in the threat area gains a threat token... And that's that for now. Um, but before a minion with threat tokens activates, now I have to resist one. Um, which is not, I mean, it's not too bad. But uh, hopefully I don't have, it doesn't get much worse because uh, I only have one injure, one fortitude as the elf man. But I have succeeded in resisting one. So, good job, elf. Right. And then, um, now he's going to activate, he's going to engage, which means he's actually, because he's ranged, he basically wants to move to the position that is as far from me as he can be while still being ranged. I, he actually would like to get to range of both of us, uh, so I'm including Huey here, but Huey's very far away. Um, so I don't, I don't know if he would actually try to move, well he can't move through me anyway, so he can't get to Huey. So I think he's just going to move so that he's essentially range 5 from me, as far as he can be, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. He could move over here, but I don't know... Does he have line of sight to me from there? To work out line of sight, you essentially just have to draw a straight line from any space he's in to any... Draw, li draw a line from any part of the space he's in to any part of the space I'm in without crossing a door or wall. So I'm pretty sure you can go from this corner to this corner without crossing that corner there. Which means he does have line of sight to me there. So I think he's just going to hide at the back of the room, essentially. And uh, throw a bomb at me. Because um, uh, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that is range 5. Um, which also means I can shoot it with my bow, can't I? Yes, that has range 5. So it's not much. It's much over much. But uh, now he's going to hit me for Inflict 5, which sucks. Uh, because I've only got uh, two dice to defend this um, 5 damage coming at me. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get on with it. The question is, do I spend a supply? Uh, I think I probably do. So I spend a supply to add um, an additional die. Especially since I don't have any focus tokens, so... <laughs> That's bad. Do I have anything else I can use? Anything that can be used or exhausted to help? Well, actually, do you know what? I could, uh, I could actually just become a werewolf right now. But I don't think that would help. Let me just quickly check. Uh, no. Um, no, no, it would not become a werewolf. Uh, it would not be useful to... Oh, no, he has one armor, though. Doesn't he, the werewolf? Oh, yeah, okay, so that would actually be useful. Oh, maybe I'll just turn into a werewolf right before I get shot. <laughs> sure, why not? Um, because the werewolf has the same dexterity as the elf, but he has one additional armor, which is applied before losing tokens. So that could be useful. So we take a damage, and we spend an, a shadow, and we definitely don't roll an earth. Because if we roll an earth, uh, I'm really, really, really in trouble. He rolled water. It's fine. I knew it would be fine. I was never worried. This is a wet dungeon. It's a really wet dungeon. Okie dokie. Werewolf time! I'm gonna get you. Oh, and uh, then we actually do become a werewolf. Oh, 
I'm gonna get you, little piggy. I'm gonna come eat you. Well, now I'm out of range. Now I'm miles out of range. Oh, I didn't think this through. Oh, well. Uh, wow. Okay, so that's two successes and a critical. So I can roll an additional die. Nice. Ah, another success. So that's four successes, uh, minus the armor, and that's it. That's five. So I don't even take any damage. Great. Great. Great, 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 great. Good. I approve. Good job, werewolf. You've done it. You've successfully avoided the damage. Okay, so I think uh, that's the threat row complete. So now we're down here. We must either discard an armor token or resist three. I shall discard the armor token to um, because I had two. And then we must draw and resolve one of Gert's cards. War Squeal event. Each character must either discard an armor token or resist four with willpower. I hate it. I shall discard my second armor token. Now I'm down to no armor tokens. I need to get adjacent to that mirror. Okay, so because that gives me armor tokens, you see. Okie dokie. And then what happens, Mike? Well, we go back down here to this bottom row. We start by resolving this. I have no focus, so I'm just going to have to resist three with my intelligence of one. Oh, jeez, I didn't think this through. I'm going to take some damage here. I guess that's kind of okay. So I have double, I've rolled the double symbol, so I have one success and one focus symbol. I have no focus tokens, so I'm going to take two damage and gain a focus token. So I'm back up to three damage. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Nobody worry. Um, so that's resolved. Burning Altar doesn't do anything right now. I can take a damage to set a symbol. I'm not going to do that. Um, no one's adjacent to the mirror. No one's in these other rooms. So that's all fine and resolved. So we're back to me. And I'm going to refresh all of my exhausted stuff. I'll give myself three actions. Oh, you didn't get to see any of that because I'm the one coming. There we go. Three actions. And all of that's refreshed. And now, I've got three cards here. And I think my inclination is just to move in here and then kind of hang out because I think to shoot me here, actually, no, the pig could probably get me from there. I want to activate this mirror. So that I can um, find a clue. Because even if I find the altar, it doesn't matter unless I've got the right clues. So I need to find another match and clue symbol. Um, I should murder this pig, though. Problem is, I don't have enough movement to get next to him and then get back towards the mirror so i'm kind of tempted see i'm thinking if i hide in this corner then maybe he will have to move out a bit move closer to me to get line of sight um or at least he'll move in a direction i mean he is close to this door though so i mean if i do is it possible for me to get to over there hit him and then get back here no no, I'm too far away. I need one additional space of movement. It blows. Um, I need... I need to... I have more movement. As a werewolf, I should be able to move further. As a werewolf, I should be able to move further than three spaces. I demand it. I'm kind of okay with not killing the pig, though, this turn. Although there's not really much point in me attempting to get rid of the curious odor, and I don't like that it's building up. Also, I don't have any armor, but I will be next to the mirror, which gives me armor. 
but won't give me armor in time, so I'll still have to do the resistance thing. Okay. There's a lot going on. So... I sh There's a lot going on. And... Oh, maybe I just turn back into an elf and shoot the pig with my bow. Then I don't even need to move to him. Ah, oh, that's probably a better idea. Okie dokie, fingers crossed this pays off. I'm turning back into elf boy. I shall exhaust my character card and spend the sun. Of course I roll this bloody earth symbol, which I can use to do a lot of cool stuff when I'm an, a werewolf and doesn't do anything for me when I'm an elf. Right, uh, I'm gonna exhaust the amulet of Loon to re-roll that and one of these water symbols actually because I'd quite like to get an air or something. So fingers crossed I just don't roll into another earth symbol. We'll figure it out if I do in due course. Uh, I also get a focus actually that I forgot to take when I become an elf again. Well, two sun symbols, not exactly what I was hoping for, but I'll take it. It's better than uh, anything else that I might have otherwise had. So I think now it is time to attack him with my bow. Do I spot the weakness again? I don't think I do because he's only got three health. He's got two health and one armor. So I think let us just shoot him. I'm going to flip this over to attack him. Oh, also, I'm not the big scary wolf man anymore. I'm sad and tiny little elf with bow. But I have range five now, which is the important thing. So, let us shoot. And also discard one supply. Do I think I can get the... No, we shall discard a supply to make sure we can roll three dice here. And this is pretty much a sure thing. Oh, it's totally a sure thing. So we've got two, oh no it's not, I actually lied. So we've got two double symbols there, and then a focus symbol, so we've got two successes and three focus, but we have a token, so we can spend that to make three successes, and then we gain two focus. So that is good. So we actually went up by a focus, and we killed the little piggy, which gets us another supply. Good. Get out of here, you little jerk. That is discarded. Okay. Um, and we've still got two actions. I think that was probably the better choice, even though... Um, even though it's a bummer to become an elf. <laughs> when we could be a werewolf. So I'm going to flip uh, this guy here. I'm going to go one, two, three, so that I can gain the benefits of this mirror um, next at the end of the turn. And then I have one action left with which to do something useful and fun. Um, and I think it's probably just going to be interact with the curious odor. I know it's not all that exciting, but I should resolve that before things get... Things could escalate and get wildly out of hand. And I am an elf now, so I shall throw two dice, I think, to make some progress. Oh, there's a difficulty one on this. Let's spend a supply and get three dice.
Okay, I see. I see two successes. Now I need four to resolve it. And I see two focus symbols. So I think we just pony up the two focus tokens and go for resolving it all in one shot rather than spending another action on it later. Because I am a little concerned about how long this is taking and I don't want Gert to show up if I can help it. So that's resolved. That... Um, we don't, unfortunately, get a supply token for that, but we're all out of time, and so it is... But we have cleaned up the mess, reset things a little bit. It's all feeling good, um, at least good enough. So, end of the hero turn, we do get a card. It is Tearing Fangs again. Okay, well, whoever shows up next is going to get werewolfed to absolute death. Super death, um, super werewolf death. But I'll flip over my hero turn card, and now we're going into the threat. There's actually no threat cards, uh, which is great, so we don't have to resolve any of those. Uh, we do have to do Gert. I have to discard an armor token. I don't have one, so I'm going to have to resist three. Um, I have two dice for this. I'm not spending a supply, so here we go. So I see two successes, which means I take a damage. So I've taken four damage now. I'm eight hit points left, but I do still have my healing potion, so I think we're okay. Um, I did get rid of the earth symbol, so now we're just doing one of Gert's events, which is weight of leadership event. Each minion moves up to three spaces towards the nearest character, then each character adjacent to an enemy must inflict five. Oof. If there's no minion in play, each hero must draw a lurker card. All right, so I'm drawing a Lurker card. It's always something. Please don't be really nasty. Please just be something kind and easy. Just something friendly, friendly creature. What is it? It's, oh, it's, an, it's, it's actually one of the pigs. It's just one of the pigs, but not... He's from, like, another clan. He's not part of Gert's clan. <laughs> There's a pig lurking... Lurking around. Here he is. It's the guy we saw from before with the, uh... Mutton and the staff. Alright, so he shows up over here. And he's like... I'ma come get you. And I'm like, uh, I, guess, I mean, sure, I guess I'm not too worried about you, probably. Um, I mean, inflict five sucks, and he can generate armor if he doesn't hit me, that sucks. I probably should kill him. Maybe I'll become a werewolf and eat him alive. But he goes there into the threat zone, and he's not going to activate. Um, and incidentally, if you are watching at home, for any uh, car... When you're activating the threat zone, any cards that appear in the threat zone while you're activating it, for example, um, if you were resolving this card while it was in your threat zone and it says draw a threat card, the card, any cards that appear in your threat zone while you're in the threat phase uh, do not activate. So you've got to turn to sort of deal with them before they, they destroy you. Um, but that's fine. We're not even in that zone, that phase anyway. We're actually currently doing Gert's phase, and that's now resolved. So we're over here, where I'm going to now have to do a resist of three on intelligence. Bum 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 bum. bum. This is fine. I've one success and one critical, so I get to roll an additional die. Yes, blam, and it's another success. I have successfully resisted. All of the damage. Great. Uh, then we are going to look at the altar, which would let me take a damage to change one of these to a face of my choice. And considering... And considering that... Nope. I think it's fine, actually. I think I'm okay with it. So, uh, none of this is applicable, but we do get to do the mirror now, because I did manage to make it adjacent to... Oh! I forgot to do... No, I did. I did resist on that. So that's fine. Um, so, a hero adjacent to this may gain an armor token. Yes, please. So, one armor token for my elf, who's upside down, because that's how I exhaust these cards. 
And then I can also draw a clue token. So please, oh please, oh please, torn map or ripped fabric. Nope, we got half a scroll. So I shall take control of this. I now have three clue cards, none of which match up. So that's uh, not, that's, that's three half clues don't make a whole clue, unfortunately, in this instance. Bummer for me. Uh, and this is discarded. And the mirror is there as well. And I think we're done resolving that row. So it's back to my turn. Unflippy. Resolve. Restore. All of the things. All right. Give me these. Once again, I don't really want to spend an action moving towards this stupid pig man. So I'm kind of tempted to just try and kill him with my bow. I only need six damage. Um, so if I use spot the weakness... I might just be able to do that. Um, I think. So let's uh, let's let's go ahead and resolve this right after I have a quick sip of coffee. Mm. Right, this is my healing potion. Um, I would like to interact with this mirror to get some more armor tokens as well. I think shoot, mirror, next room, probably. When I'm playing solo on this, and I haven't played with other players, but I get the impression that letting enemies sort of like... You'd have obviously more enemies running around with other players. Um, and so... I think... I think you'd have more enemies running around with other players. But, um... I think that, uh, yeah, all hail the magical fuel that keeps this channel going. Um, I'm kidding, that's actually my supporters on Patreon. But coffee helps on a day-to-day -day basis. Please tell me there's more coffee, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so we need, uh... What we... What I... I think that uh, what I don't want to do is go, in, go into the next room and then there's another pig and then suddenly I'm getting wailed on by two guys and I don't have the means to take them all out. Um, if it was another melee guy, that would be okay because they'd run up to me and as the, I could just turn into the werewolf and tear them apart. But if it's a ranged guy, um, he'll be dodging me while the other guy's running up to me and that would be problematic. I don't think I'm, like I said, I'm worried about time and action. Uh, running out of actions here, but I do have a lot of werewolf cards I haven't really used yet, so. I do, maybe interacting with the mirror is a bad choice. Because, oh, hello. Um, because... It's just, it seems like such a shame not to use the mirror while we're here, because we get armor tokens and we need those to counteract the uh the resist checks with gert um and also searching is good items are good and useful but yeah i'll tell you what here's what we'll do we'll search the mirror then we'll move up to the new door, which we can open. And then depending who's on the other side, we either move into the room and deal with the new threat, or we stand here and shoot the pig and try and kill him with our bow. I think that's our our choice. Because I don't mind leaving him for a turn and forcing him to sort of chase me into the next room. Let him, him get a bit closer. I can potentially start using my werewolf cards to tear people up. Um, if there's two melee enemies, that would be fine by me. Um, but what I don't want to do is, um, leave him alone. I mean, the thing is, I'm going to use my last action. I mean, ideally what we'll reveal is a trap or a, uh, an event so we don't have to deal with another enemy, but the chances of those are slim seeing as I've already been through a bunch of them. So I think it's probably going to be a new enemy. But if it's another uh, cannibal, that's probably okay. 
I mean, realistically, I mean, li not realistically, but semantically, literally, if you think about it, the Ragok cannibals actually wouldn't be interested in me because I'm an elf and they're cannibals. So surely they should eat each other and leave me alone, right? I mean, if you're going to be semantic about it. I'm just saying. Just saying. So let's uh, let's start by using our um, in, uh, our first action to do a search interact on the mirror. Um, so we get two dice for this, and I think that it is worth using a supply token because we'll probably get an additional success, uh, which will result in another supply token and an armor token. So let's do that. Yeah! Okay, well, I see a focus, which is a shame, but I also see a crit, which is great. Because I get to throw another die! Woo! Another crit! Oh, it's another focus. Bummer. Well, seeing as I have two focus results, I might as well spend one, which is my only one, to make one a success. So that's three successes and a focus. So, that's fine. I can have my focus token back. I can have a search card, which, if it's a lurker, we're going to have to completely revise the plan. Hopefully there's not too many lurker cards in here. Poxoid bladder. Consumable. I mean, this looks like a trap. Choose an enemy within range. Deal... Come on. Deal two damage to the chosen enemy and one damage to each enemy adjacent to the chosen enemy. So, better if there's a lot of enemies. I don't have a whole lot of enemies on the board right now, but that's that's okay. Um, we can still use it to take someone out if we fail to kill them. Right, and then we got this, which means there's two spare successes, which means two supplies and two armor tokens, which is all good. Good, 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 good. Nice. Oh, and then we got a focus token back. Okay. And then, so I think... Let's continue with the plan. Yes, I know, Eddie. I am the natural enemy of all pigs. And yet, I seem to only be killing them in elf form. It's deeply unsatisfying. All right, so we flip over in our second action token there to move three spaces. So we're going to go one, two, and open the door and see who's on the other side. Where's the doors? Hello? Who is there? So first off, it's a feature, which is... out of focus. Sezra's Chosen. It's a statue. Activate each enemy... Each... Activate. Each enemy in this room gains one armor token. If there's no enemy in this room... You must draw one Lurker card. Oh, that's no good at all. Well, the good news is, actually, if the other pig follows us in, he'll gain an armor token and we won't have to draw a Lurker. Interact. Each hero in this room gains a focus and may move up to two spaces. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Yeah, because what's going to happen is because uh, we're going to activate the pig first. He's going to move four, which doesn't put him in the room. And then he's not going to be able to hit me. So then he's going to move four again and then gain an armor. So he's going to actually wind up gaining two armor tokens, which is bad. But f eight spaces will put him into the room with me, which means I won't have to draw a second enemy, which is good. So, you know, pros and cons, right? Cesar's chosen which is this statue here. Can we see it? Ah, he appears out of the mist, and then he disappears again. So it is here. The statue is here. And... Right. Damn it! Once again, I need but one more space of movement. Oh, but we still have to do the threat. Oh, shit. 
I forgot about all the rest of the stuff I have to do. Okay, so this is probably not good. All right. A strange fatigue. Weariness settles in. It could be some hex, or it could simply be natural exhaustion. Whatever it is, it must be tended to if you hope to continue the journey. There's no time to make camp, so you must dig deep for the resolve to continue on. You cannot rest for long. Rest until you find what you're looking for. When reveal, attach this card to the room's feature card. The hero must either discard, then each hero must discard a supply or resist four might. Well, I'm not going to be able to resist that because I have one might, so I must discard a supply. This room sucks. It's official. I hate this room. Oh no, it's... Oh, we haven't seen this pig before. I find this pig troubling. Two armor. Engage, inflict five. If unable, inflict four. Ignoring, range, and targeting the furthest character. Oh god. Well, she's gonna try and target, uh... She's going to try and target uh, Huey, but she won't have line of sight. Oh, I don't like her either. Okay, I'm going to try and kill her, I think. Or maybe I should try and kill the other guy. I mean, it's kind of much over much. But he's slow and far away now. She's going to be in the room I'm trying to go into. I need to get adjacent to this stupid statue so I can search it for goddamn clues. So, I didn't know that she was a throwing knife person. So, I've got one more space of movement, and if I move into the room, do I have ranged her? One, two, three, four, five. I do. So, maybe I just move into the room and shoot her. But then I'm going to be stood in the doorway. He's not going to be able to come in. The, 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 that guy's not going to be able to come in and then a lurker will spawn so I'm better off actually staying out here shooting him and using her to stop the spawn in the room and then she'll be inflicting five on me which sucks am I in range of him? one, two, three, four, five I'm out of range shit no, wait, that can't be. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm out of range. But I do have one more space of movement. Oh, she's only got range one, so she is actually... She is, in fact, actually melee. And she's got movement five. If unable, she will engage with inflict four, ignoring range and targeting the farthest character. So she's going to engage... And inflict five. She's going to engage and then inflict five. If she can't inflict five, she'll engage again. Which means that she's going to move five. So she's probably going to come out of the room. One, two, three, four, five. And then she would engage, inflict five. Well, she'd be in the room. She'd be in the door here. And she would have line of sight to me because um, I would probably use my... I'd have to go over here if I'm going to shoot that guy. And if she's here, she'd have line of sight to me there, so... I guess she'll stay in the room. She'll just be in the doorway, and then I'll have to kill her. Although I guess I can become a werewolf and murder her. So yeah, I think this is my best plan. I think my best plan is to backtrack a space, try and kill this guy, the pig at the back of the room, and then let her advance across the room. Next turn, I turn into a wolf, kill her, and then stand next to this thing. And then it's going to spawn another lurker. Oh, this sucks. I mean, it's fine. I've got this under control. I've got this under control. I'm a werewolf. I'll just murder everything in the room. Forget about it. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Or I can just kind of ignore them and try and tank all the damage. It seems like a terrible idea, though. Um, but I must be getting close. I mean, the thing is... I say I must be getting close, but let's not get too hasty. Eh? No, I still think the plan where I become a werewolf and eviscerate everyone is probably the best plan. 
Generally speaking, though, I don't like this room, and I think that uh, I should try and ignore it. But... The problem is that I'm quite... F I don't want to go up here, because I'm just getting further away from the stairs, which is also bad, because I need to get back to the stairs. So... Huey, do something useful, you jerk! <sighs> okay, my final point of movement. I go over here, and then I shoot Combat Pig, and I need to kill him. So I'm going to use Spot Weakness, um, and I'm going to use a Supply. Yeah. I bet the pig. So I've got. Uh, what have I got here? Play this card. Discard one armor token from the target. Well, he doesn't have any. Um, but I get to add a crit result. I can uh, gain. I can spend it. So I get three dice because I spent. A, it's dexterity and I spent a supply. I can spend this to gain a focus token, which I shall do. Fingers crossed I don't now roll. A bad symbol. Okay, it's fire. That's not great, but it's not terrible. I'll take it. Um, it's good for the werewolf, actually. I think he can use that. And I think that's all I've got going for me. There's not anything else useful I can do here, right? I mean, I could use the wind to deal an extra damage, but I don't have it. Um, if I get lucky here, I'll kill him. If I don't get lucky, I'll just throw this bladder at him and kill him with the bladder. That'll do it. Um, I, it's not even in action to do that, so. Here we go! Alright, well that's good. Um, because we've got a double here. Another success, and also a crit. So we can throw an additional die. And we're going to add a crit, actually. So now we get to roll two more dice. And I really should have got out the rest of the dice, but they're in another box. So, that's great. <laughs> And that's another crit. Okay, so, hang on. That's amazing. Um, I've got to roll one more die, and then I rolled that, so now I've got to roll two more dice. So, uh, let me track my successes with these action tokens. So there's two successes to mark these crits. Okay, this guy's done for. Oh my god, another crit, and also another double uh, symbol here. So, here we go. And we're going to add, roll another die. Wow. Well, he is good with his bow. I mean, it's kind of a bummer because I just want to eviscerate things as the werewolf, but... That's another crit. <laughs> These dice are loaded, man. I did not get this lucky when I was playing on my own. Also, I don't need this many successes. This is outrageous. Alright, and there's another double. Well, that's great. So, we've got a total here of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 successes... We needed six to kill him, so that definitely kills him. And three focus symbols, so now we're also uh, maxed out on focus. <laughs> that was amazing. That was honestly a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed succeeding a whole lot. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to have all ten dice for the next game, and I'll get no crits at all. Okay, so... Uh, this needs to be over here. That's done. I actually also need a search token on there, because I did do a search on the mirror. Um, okay. And he's dead. And I get I get a supply, I think. I know there was a bit of talk about whether or not lurkers give you supplies, but I think they do. Anyway, I want them to, so I've decided that they do. Yeah, I know, Eddie. I'm not used to seeing so much success rolled on an RSP stream, either. <laughs> Maybe hackers, everyone uh, is rooting for me in this one for some reason that I don't understand. But uh, that was great. Um, this is discarded. That supply's done. Um, I took a supply for defeating him. I think that's the end of my turn. I don't think there's anything else I can do. I think I shall use the Crescent of Loon to heal a damage and draw a card because I would like... Well, I've got so many werewolf cards, though. 
I just need to become a werewolf. So maybe I won't. I'd have to roll this. Which is kind of okay. But it also means I wouldn't be able to turn back into an elf if I needed to. Um... Uh, um, I'm just conscious I'm short of elf cards, and also these spot weakness cards are amazing, and uh, now that I've run out of them, I'm feeling vulnerable and alone. Yeah, let's do it. I also could use a heal anyway, so here we go. Heal, so we exhaust that, we roll this. Please show me something that's not a horrible earth one. Oh, wind. That's fine. I can actually use that with my bow, but I don't need to. Um, so I get to heal one, so I'm down to three damage on me, and I get to draw a card, which is another werewolf card. Oh, it's more tearing fangs. So basically now I can, like... Um, Play this card immediately. Can I chain these? I presume not. Is there a rule somewhere where it says one reaction per opportunity? I didn't read anything like that. But if I could chain these, I could theoretically do four attacks in a row. I would take three damage, but that would be nuts. Just eviscerate one thing. Um, okay. Uh, still not exactly ideal, but I do get to draw another card, just as standard anyway. Um, which is... Loon's Elusive Grace, so another feat, which is good. Um, probably should use one of those at some point before I turn back, before I turn into a werewolf permanently, because there's no suns to turn me back. But uh, that's the end of my turn, so we're going to head over... Oh, that's already flipped. So we're going to head over here, and we're going to activate the threat row, which is going to be the Ragon Blutter. And she's going to activate, she's going to move 5, she wants to get us, so she's going to go and move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh no, she's out of range, I forgot about this. Um, this doesn't make any sense to me actually, this part here. If unable, engage and inflict four, ignoring range and targeting the furthest character. So, the thing is, when they want to, it's, it's, the AI is very simple. If they want to be next to you, they stand next to you. If they want to be far away from you, they stand far away from you. But now she's range 1, but also has infinite range. So does she come and stand next to me? Oh yeah, okay, the idea is she must still come and stand next to me and inflict 4. And then I guess she's just next to me. Oh, that's bad, because now she's leaving the room. And I'm going to get another lurker. Okay, next turn we're going to have to turn into a werewolf and eviscerate everyone. So she's going to go 1 out to here, um, and now she's next to me, so she just attacks me and inflicts 4. So... I'm just going to roll two dice for this, because that's my stat. And I want to save my supplies. Possibly later. Hey, another crit. This is actually outrageous. And three successes. So I take uh, one damage, which uh, bounces off of my... Oh, I have zero armor. So I lose an armor token. It's fine. It's all fine. And that is resolved on her. So we're down to Gert now. My things are getting hairy. So I have to uh, discard an armor token or resist three. I'll discard the token. And... Oh god. We're so close to spawning out boss monster as well. Trail of Refuge. Discard a supply or resist four. Well, that's a no-brainer. We discard a supply. I'm sad about it though. I don't like it. Okay, and now down here I have to discard either three focus or resist three. I think I'll take the resist three. Two dice. Oh, 
All right, so we got a crit and a focus. We resolved the crit before we decide what to do about the focus. Sorry, these are kind of hard to see for you guys. It's another success. So, I mean, I've got five focus, so I'll definitely spend one to make up three. It takes zero damage. So you can, five's the maximum anyway. I couldn't gain another one even if I didn't. So, that's fine. We've resolved that. The burning altar. Um, yeah, so I think we take a damage, go up to four, to set this to a sun. Hey, Grisha, thanks for joining in, man. Uh, and now we have to activate Cesar's Chosen. If each enemy in this room gains an armor token, if there's no enemy in the room, each... No enemies in the room, each hero in this room must draw a Lurker card. Oh, I misread it. Thank God. Okay, so we don't have to draw a Lurker card because there's no hero in the room. Phew. That's good. Right, but we do need to get into that room. And finish our search. Okay. But that's that resolved for now. So, back to me. Flip that over. Store this card. Three actions restored. And what are we going to do? Oh, I think... Well, we have to kill this Raglan because, quite frankly, she's in the way. But... I have a problem where, you know, she's in the way. She's blocking the door. I'm going to have to kill her. But I've got a problem where uh, then if I end my turn in the room with the statue, I'm going to spawn a lurker. But I can't search the statue for clues if I don't end my turn in that room. So I guess I'm just going to wind up spawning another creature. That might not be the end of the world. It depends on how many it depends on how many of these feature cards we get have to go through before we find the altar. So we could send Huey to do some searching. Um I don't know what happens if Huey dies. Is he just dead and lost from the game forever? I actually have no idea. Um because I don't know how allies work. So I'll have to figure that out for the next stream. I did not expect to have one at this early stage. Um, but yeah, I think I think we just eviscerate that pig, stand next to the statue, and deal with whatever lurker comes out of the deck, I guess. Is there good cards in the lurker deck? I don't think so. But uh, let's start by um let's start by turning into a werewolf i suppose so we're going to uh exhaust this card and become werewolf i'm gonna eat your face and quite literally because i'm actually a werewolf and you're a pig so i also take a damage did i do that no i didn't do that we take a damage. No, I did. Yes, I did do it. Okay, God. No, I don't think I did. So I'll leave it on five, and then after all this die. Ooh. Okay, that's fine. It's wind. It's not earth. Although actually, the werewolf can use earth, so that's kind of it's kind of devilish sword, really. Um. Flip these bad boys over. I could also use some shadow, actually. Okay. And now let's uh, let's kill this pig. How should we do this? What's the best way to do this? Uh, I think we play. I think we just attack her with the claws, which is just three dice. She's got a lot of armor, so we don't really want to do the double hit because the second attack's just going to be blocked by her armor. She's actually not... She's probably the worst kind of target to, to take out with the wolf form. So... He says after he turned into the wolf. But 
But uh, I want to use this as well to move around and do a search. Oh, I can't do a search. There's not even the right symbols. Damn it, this sucks. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to exhaust Valerie's message and spend a focus token to change one of these into shadow symbol. And then I'm going to attack her with the wolf claws, which is going to be three dice. And I can exhaust the Crescent of the Loon and spend this to add a crit, because that is the wolf side's bottom power. Come on. There we go. Exhaust and spend shadow after rolling your dice for your attack to add a crit. I mean, to be fair, I can wait. But uh, I don't think... I think we're going to need this extra damage. But I guess let's find out. So we get three dice because we have three physical might. So here we go. What we're looking for is seven successes, which is extremely unlikely without that extra crit. Well, we did well. We got two plus a crit. So we get one more die. And also, that's three... So there's four. So now I'm going to exhaust Crescent of the Loon. Spend that shadow magic. So here's the shadow reroll. Oh, that was a success, wasn't it? So I've rolled it into fire, which is actually not all that helpful, I don't think. Oh, it's not bad, though. We can use that with Tearing Fangs later, perhaps. Um, but we get to add a crit to the result, which means we have to resolve that now by rolling another die. So we've got five of the seven we need. throw that in the tray. I actually didn't see what it was. Okay, so there's six. Damn it, that's one off. It's okay. It's fine. Um, oh, well, actually, yeah, that's one off. Damn it. Because I, for, I was like, oh, I forgot to do her armor, but then I didn't. So, anyway, she's down to one health. And I think what I'll do is, rather than using Tearing Fangs, which I was considering, um, it's not its not an action either. I was going to say I could use the Poxoid Bladder to finish her off, but Tearing Fangs is also not an action. So I'm just trying to think, which how do I want to do this? I think this one's probably better, actually, to use. I also have three of these, so I think let's use this. We get to attack again. I think this is going to be more than enough. Um, no, it's not. But I'll tell you why I'm not going to augment this. Because, so I've actually rolled two focus and a success. She's going to block that with her armor, though. So I could spend focus tokens here to make up the successes I need. But if you look at the bottom, it says... If you look at the bottom of the card, camera, camera, oh, uh, it's, there we go, deal one damage to an enemy within range. So I'm just going to spend that fire symbol that I just rolled to do one damage, and that go bypasses armor, so. Um, what we can do is actually use these to get back to focus tokens. And then we can spend this to deal the fi final damage to her. She's done. Get out of here. You're dead. And I get a supply. And also I have to roll this. And also I have to take one more damage, which is bad. Now I'm on six. That's that's an uncomfortable amount of damage that I've taken. But I do get I did take the focus tokens, so we're all good on that front. Yeah. And that's a shadow symbol. That is useful to me as a wolf person. Okay. So, um, I guess I'm going to draw a lurker, which sucks, but I suppose that's going to be what it is. I didn't attack, so that was one action down. So, let's go ahead and do a move. Um, I really wish there was an earth symbol. Why is there no earth symbols when I need them, and only earth symbols when I don't need them? This is the law of dice. One, two, three. Uh, three is enough. Three movements enough. 
And I can search the statue to gain a focus and move up to two spaces. That's kind of useless to me right now. Um, I also don't have good willpower as a wolf, so there's a thing. Um, I might as well take this potion of healing in any case. Um, I don't see any reason to save it for the time being. Okay, so... Ugh, I really want... I really want to... get a earth symbol. The thing is, if I activate Huey, I could, but I need Huey to do something useful. The only thing Huey can do that's useful is explore this room. And I'm worried that uh, that will put him in danger of death, because I don't know how that could affect things. In terms of... Well, he could probably take one attack. He does have seven health. Okay. Yes. Huey activates for the first time and goes one, two, three, up to here. Oh my god, Huey's going to explore a room. Do it, Huey! Do it! So the feature of this room, possibly the altar, is... It is! It's the altar! Oh my god, I was not expecting that. Place the altar in this room and discard this card. Okay, that's actually great news. I'm so pleased. You can't see that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I mean, I guess I'm pleased. I actually don't have the clues I need. So this may not be the only room we can explore. Um, additionally, um, there's another issue here where actually... Hmm, Potential ambush! Something isn't right. The feeling of being watched increases with every step. With every turn comes more and more dark corners. Too many places for an ambush, but not enough reasons to turn around now. The search must continue. Attach this card to the room's feature card. After drawing threat cards, each hero must test three. Dexterity. Each hero who fails must activate the drawn threat. Oh no, Huey might die. A hero adjacent to the attached feature may draw a card from the clue deck. Yes, that's fine. So we can actually get a clue from the altar. I guess the altar card counts as the feature in this room? I don't know, chat. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong here. Am I supposed to attach this to the altar? Um... In any case, uh, Huey's dexterity is one, so he's probably not going to pass this check. Um, Brett card. It's a Ragok Cannibal in yellow. Oh, he's worse than the Lurker version. Oh, he's much worse. You were gonna die. Uh, yes, the altar is a feature. Huey is a character, not a hero. Oh, so he doesn't actually have to test. So he's kind of just stumbled in there like a moron. Triggered the ambush, but actually it doesn't matter. Thanks, Janet. Good job, Huey. Uh, so here's our Ragok cannibal. He appears over here. Um, Huey can move one more space into the room. But will the Ragok cannibal come and kill Huey? I might have to do a check to see what happens when we activate that guy. But the good news is he doesn't activate right now. 
this also means I can find a clue on the altar, uh, which is interesting. So I guess I've got two opportunities to find clues here. But um, Huey now has an opportunity to roll two dice. So I think I'm going to roll this one and this one, because they're not very useful to me right now. And then if necessary, I can actually spend this water to change them to any phase. I mean, you can also do an attack. Oh, he has range four. One, two, three, four. He's out of range of the, the guy. That's a shame. Huey is a character, not a hero. I'll have to remember that. All right, come on, Huey. Get uh, an Earth symbol for me, buddy. Well, he didn't do it. So I shall spend the water, change this one to an Earth, because I want it, but not that one. I don't want that to be Earth. Fire's okay. But I think I would rather have um, Shadow. Shadow's useful for my werewolf guy. And then I have to roll this one. Uh. Okay, more sun. That's okay. Um, right, and then with our final action, we're going to use on the scent, which is the werewolf card that lets me... Uh, move and search if I have earth so I shall uh, go ahead and do a dexterity check I'm going to spend this token because I really need three successes here so I can go one two three and get next to the statue there and search for clues I'll also draw a lurker card which is bad but we'll just deal with that when it comes to it when it becomes a problem you know I'm very much a sort of uh you know Tomorrow's problems kind of guy. Why worry about him till tomorrow, you know? So here we go. Come on, Mr. Werewolf. Hey, that's great. We've got uh, three. Actually, that we can spend a token, and we might as well, because we're at max. So there's four successes right there. Um, so we shall go one, two, three, four. Four, so we can get a bit closer into the room and then we can spend the um, earth magic there to do a search uh, let's reroll this it's more earth magic that's a problem uh, I'll deal with that in a minute damn it see never earth magic until I don't want it why is it like this Okay, so now we're doing a search with uh, Fortitude. So we get three of these, and here we go. And this has been spent to play the card. Oh, it's a feat. It's not a... Oh, it's not an action. Oh, that changes everything. Oh, I didn't notice this was a feat. Ooh. Okay, we've still got an action left then. That's intriguing indeed. Okay, so we've got one success there. We've got a double face, so a success and focus. We've got a crit there, so that's great. So throw one more die. And it's another success. Um, so I think four is enough for a search check of six. Oh, but I could level up. But I'm probably going to have to do a lot of fighting in a minute. So let's uh, just take an additional focus and call it four successes, um, which gets us one search card, which better not be a lurker. And then... we can uh, gain three of these bad boys, three supplies, nice. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, seeing as I have an action left, it might be better to just run into this room here so that uh, Huey doesn't get mauled by that cannibal. If I use on the scent again, I can actually get rid of this other earth symbol 
and to get some movement. I mean, I could possibly even get next to that guy and use my action for an attack. But if I can end my turn adjacent, I won't be able to end my turn adjacent to that. Damn it. But this could have the final clue I need, because it's got a quest card on it. In which case, I don't need to get the clue from this. Oh, thanks, Janet. That's, uh, that's reassuring. What do we got? We got Potion of Intellect. Before rolling dice for your intellect, add two. Oh, that's great. I actually do need that. As a werewolf. Um, but, Janet, I'm right in thinking that if I don't go into this room, this thing's going to run across here and eat Huey, right? Because, I mean, it's got range too, and it can reach him with movement. Um, but because it can't go through closed doors. Um... Huh. Yes, I think it's just a sh it's it's such a shame that he's not. Oh, I could get here. That's adjacent to both of them. If I can get here, how much movement is that? One, two, three, four. Four movement. If I can spend four movement, if I can get four movement. I'd need four successes, and I'd have three dice. <sighs> I have to put a search token here on the Cesra's chosen. And then if the, the clue card is not one of these three, then I'll be in trouble. But we can cross that bridge when we come to it. So yeah, let's. I think we should do that. So here's what we're, I'm going to use on the scent again, which is test dexterity. I'm going to spend this to add another die. So we've got three dice. We need four successes. So we need either a double face or a critical here in order to make this work. Otherwise, it's going to be a bummer. But we'll deal with that bridge. Cross that bridge when we come to it. Well. Ask and you shall receive. We've got two crits and a focus symbol. Um, so. Oh, look at that. Lots of doubles there. So... One, two, three, four successes, which is what we needed. I mean, I don't even need to spend these additional focus tokens. I'm just wasting them now. That's amazing. So that gives us the movement. So we can go one, two, open the door. We don't need to do a reveal room thing because it's been revealed. Oh, we can't move diagonally through doors. So we did actually need this. One, two, three, four. Yes, we were here, right? One, two, three, four. That's five, actually. So I actually do need five points of movement, so I will have to spend a focus token. That's lucky. I forgot you can't move uh, diagonally out of the door to here. So that's very lucky indeed. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Was I, was I here or here? It doesn't matter. The point is I'll spend the focus token to pull it off. So, okay. Fortunate. So... Then we can spend this die to do a search. So let's do that real quick. Um, we're in this room with the with the altar now, so there's no search tokens. So we've rolled two crits again. Unreal and a focus token, the focus symbol. Um, so here's two more dice, another crit, <laughs> and a double. Um, I mean, I might as well get some supplies out of this, I guess. So I'll spend a focus token, make this into a success. Usually you would do this after, but it's because I don't have the other dice out. And I need to free up a die here, so I'm just kind of doing these calculations first. Okay, so there's another double. Um, so I've currently got four successes, five, six successes, um, and two, two focus symbols. Um, so I guess I'll spend one to make seven successes, and then I'll get one focus symbol back. That's unreal. So I've got three focus symbols now, and uh, seven successes. So I draw one card, and um, we put this on here, and then I get six supply tokens. Which is going to set us up real nice for when we want to upgrade at the end of the adventure. 
I had six, right? Four, five, six. That's good. Potion of Charisma. Two for your willpower check. That's going to be great because my willpower as a wolf is terrible. Um, that's an amazing number of those. Okay, that's great because we have one more action which we're going to use to uh, hit, this, hit this pig. Um, and then we just hope that we can find the clue in this altar before Gert shows up. Or else I'm going to have to go back into the other room or explore another room, which feels like an even bigger uh, waste. All right, so here we go. Uh, attack against the pig. I don't have my crit from Crescent of Loon anymore. Um, there's not some kind of limitation, like one feet card per turn, right? I'm going to have to look that up because that feels like... But maybe it, they are just there so you can have one big turn or... Make use of uh, multiple turns, I guess. Um, in any case, I haven't exhausted the wolf claws because I didn't use the um, bottom part of it. So you can see here. Well, actions. Do action does act actually does action exhaust the card? Or surely the, it would say exhaust otherwise, just exhaust. I don't know why I'm second guessing everything. All of a sudden, it just seems like I'm having this crazy big long turn, and I feel like I'm. It can't be right. Nope. It's... It wouldn't make any sense. Um, because otherwise they'd just use the keyword exhaust. So, we've got three dice inherently. I'm going to definitely add a fourth dice. With a supply. Um, is there anything else I can do to make this worse for the pig? I don't think there is, but I may be able, I can use Tearing Fangs again if I want to, so let's just go ahead with this and see what happens. I have to show you guys these crazy rolls because otherwise no one would believe me. Alright, I see four successes. Not as dramatic as the exploding dice, but I'll take them. Um, that's fine. So our pig man takes three damage, which means he still has four hit points, which I don't like. So He's got four left. So let's play Tearing Fangs. Um, immediately after resolving the action, Wolf Claws, you may suffer a damage. So we go up to four to make another attack. And I should spend another one of these to add another die. Ah, oh, this is good. So we've got one focus symbol, two successes, and a crit. Let's throw another die and see what we get. Okay, there's another success. So I count four successes, and five would kill him. So let's go ahead and spend a focus token there. Because then we have to cancel one, leaving us with four. Four puts it up to seven, and he's dead. Be gone! Grrr! Werewolf eats you. As is... I should gain hit points when that happens. Bacon's good, okay. <laughs> right, and that's done. That's all my actions. And good job, Huey. Huey's like absolutely not okay with what just happened, I think. I think he's actually extremely scared of uh, Werewolf Layton. But I'm okay with it, and that's what's important. Okay, so... Heading over here, we've got no threat cards to resolve at all, which is great. But we have got Gert. I do have one armor token that I can discard, so we can avoid that resist by getting rid of that. Now, 
grab one more card after this, and then it's boss time. War Screel, discard an armor token or resist four. Well, I don't have any more armor tokens, so I'm going to have to resist four. I've only got one die on this because my willpower in marble form sucks, but I do have this potion of charisma. So I shall use that to add two additional die to help me. Here. Here we go. Okay, I see one success and a double. So I think I'll probably just take a damage and have a focus token. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. I'll spend a focus token and we'll take no damage at all. Um, if I avoided the da one damage here, I'd just have to take it for something else some other time. Okay, so that's her card resolved. So now we're down here, where I'm going to have to do resist three, because um, I ain't got the focus tokens to spend to cover these off. But I'll use the potion of intellect, so I get three dice again, because... What else am I going to use these for at this stage? You know? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I see two successes and a focus result. Again, I might... I don't know, though. Sometimes you get those cards where it's like, you know, resist four unless you can discard a focus token. And it's like, oh. So maybe I should just take the one damage so I'm not left without any focus whatsoever. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take one damage and have another focus token. I like to have the currency just in case I need it. Okay, so uh, that's resolved. Now it's the scorching altar. Each hero may suffer damage to change a thing. Each hero in the altar's room may deal one damage to an enemy in their room. Well, that ain't happening. But if you're adjacent to the attached feature, you can draw a clue card. So please let it be the thing I need. Yeah, baby! Ripped fabric. All right. Nice. That's great. I will take control of that. Discard this. These are not triggered at all. So we're back to my turn. And uh, uh, I think we might even be able to end the mission this round. One round before Gert, or two rounds before Gert appears. Oh, I forgot to draw a card at the end of my turn. Um, it was on the it, on the scent again. On the scent's amazing. Oh, so many copies of on the discard. Yes, Janet, this is true. So I can get rid of these two because I don't need them, and uh, they're actually hurting me. But now I can discard these two to put a quest token onto the search card and now all we have to do is get onto the stairs it says uh, anytime a hero uh, da, 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 and each hero is on the stairs can we get to the stairs this turn can I move through Huey or am I going to have to move Huey um, I actually don't know that to be fair I could just go around here though go around Huey is it sh longer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Six, seven, eight. One, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is equidistant. I actually also, yes, you can move through allies. Each hero controls a clue card and see there. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I think this is it, right? I think if I can get to the stairs now, the game ends. If there is one quest token on this card, each hero and each hero is on the stairs tile. The heroes have found the artifact within the game. So we found the urn for Mr. Vampire at long last. We've done it. We found it here in this room with the scorched thingy. And while adjacent to the altar, you may discard this card with a matching copy of it to place one quest token on the quest card, which we have done. So, I think what I'm going to do here, actually, just because it makes me happy, is I'm going to use on the scent um, to try and move uh, two spaces, and I'll tell you why. 
because I suppose I should transform back into an elf before I leave, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so here we go. We got two. Su that was about six. We got two successes, which means we can go one, two through to here, and then flip two action tokens to go one, two, three, four, five, six, getting onto the stairs over here. And the reason I'm doing this is so I have one action left to bring Huey with me. One, two, three, four. I don't think I need to do that. I just want to. <laughs> I mean, it's possibly worth trying to do... Actually, do you know what? Let's activate Huey first, because then he can reroll two of these. And if uh, we happen to get an Earth symbol, we can do one more search before we leave. Um, no, we can't, because you can't search in the stair room, because there's no feature. So, let's just leave. Job well, job's a good on. We've done it, everyone. We found the urn. We got out of the dungeon. We didn't have to fight Gert. I still haven't fought a boss monster. I don't think I want to. But that's that's mission one of Alter Quest. So we're going back to the storybook now. Find out what happens at the end of the mission. I mean, it might have been worth hanging around, doing some more searches and all that kind of stuff. But uh, how long has this stream been going? Four and a half hours. That's a long stream. I think it's time for some end. Um, each hero heals all of their damage and discards all of their focus. For every three supply the party has, they gain one random equipment card and add it to the journal. Then discard all supply. Holy cow. One, two, three. That's three equipment cards, baby. As you emerge from the pungent depths... As you emerge from the pungent depths that the Raglanders have claimed as their new foothold, you unwrap the heavy object you manage to find. We gain the decorative urn card. Decorative urn? All of this for a decorative urn? Are you kidding me? Come on, camera. There we go. An urn deeply cherished by Morse Bolton. Add one to your health value. Each time you target Wynora Morn with an attack, reduce her defense by one. Oh, I have a feeling the plot's going to thicken in a bit. Tell me this doesn't look like a bong. That is 100% a bong. Each time you... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Each hero adds one random hero upgrade card belonging to their hero to the journal. And then if Huey is not in the journal, head to 20. Well, we he is. So, we've got chapter 2, but that's the end of it for now. So, we got uh, three cards to check out. We've got uh, one random upgrade card from the upgrade pack. I'm, he's so going to betray me. I have no doubt at all that uh, that Mr. Man is going to betray me, and this is all going to go poorly. But I'm excited to get some equipment cards. And also an upgrade card. I want a powerful werewolf. I want a leap attack, like move four, and then attack might plus one. Yeah. Uh, quick. Chat, pick a number between one and eight. Five. Thanks, Janet. Here we go. All right. Blam. Lose the scent. Action elf. Search plus two. Then each hero within range may move up to two spaces and gain an armor token. Okay, so... It's not a mighty powerful attack, Janet, so I would be mad, but this is actually really useful, so I'm not mad. 
And also, search plus two will get me more supplies, which means more equipment and cool stuff, so... Heggers, we'll do your card next time. That's the wrong box. This is the right box. And this is the box for these ones. And now we're going to get three equipment cards, which is super exciting. One of them, I hope, is a much better weapon. So that when we become a werewolf, we get even more powerful attacks because we have a weapon under our claws. That is my dream. I guess I lose these supplies. I don't know, actually. It didn't say anything about losing your search cards. But I think that you have to reset the search deck as part of the setup. So I'm pretty sure they go away. I'll have to look that up, unless somebody knows. Alright, here we go. Equipment card. Three equipment cards. I'll tell you what, Hackers, we'll get equipment card number six for you, dude. Here we go. Oh. Are any of these nothing? Is there, like, nothing equipment cards? That would be a bummer. Here we go. One. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll take one off the top and one off the bottom. All right. So, what did you find, Heggers? What did you get? You got... Oblivion Chain! Well, that certainly sounds important. Equipment, weapon. Hey, it's a weapon. Attack with faith plus one. Okay, that's not bad for me, actually. My faith is two on both sides. Exhaust. Choose a minion within range. Exhaust that minion or move it up to three spaces. Oh, hey, that's great because we can uh, turn off a minion, basically. And it's range four. This is great. This is really good. I'm into this. Good choice. What else we got here? Oh, a longbow. I mean, you cannot equip an offhand weapon. We got attack with dexterity plus one. I think that's plus one. It is. And we can exhaust a earth to deal one damage to an enemy within range. Okay, so it's basically our current bow, but plus one die when we attack with it. I don't know. I'm kind of leaning into that oblivion chain. I mean, if we look at our elf... Our faith and our dexterity are both the same. The Oblivion Chain is minus one range. But. It also has the ability to equip an offhand thing. Which. Maybe is this? Plagued Staff. Equipment weapon. You cannot have an offhand weapon. Okay, so this is attack fortitude plus one. Not good for elf man. Deal one damage to each enemy in the room. To each enemy in the room. That's pretty cool. Range two though. I think this one's going into the campaign. Campaign pool. Because. Um, probably I'm not going to use that. I'll probably take the oblivion chain to be honest. Like. I like this ability to exhaust a minion or move it up to three spaces. So I can actually pull it closer to me with the Oblivion Chain and then turn it into a werewolf and then smack it with my werewolf claws. That's kind of awesome. Um, the longbow is fine. But, uh, I mean, I liked the range five on the longbow. The range five on the longbow is very good. And obviously this is just kind of a better version. I mean, it feels appropriate that I have that. Um, I don't know. I'll tell you what. I'll put them both out and we can decide next time. But I think the utility on the Oblivion Chain is going to be killer awesome. Right. So, um, Plague Staff, get out of here. You go in the pool. Um... And I'm going to have to figure out what happens with these 
consumables. I think they just go back into the, the deck. I don't think I get to keep them. But uh, other than that, we're going to reset our character deck with our new card. We can hang on to our decorative urn, put it with our mysterious stone and our other bits. And we'll be back for Alter Quest if you want it. So if you enjoyed the stream, leave a like on the video, leave a comment down below. And um, I think that's going to be a wrap for today, guys, because it's been a long stream and I have all this stuff to put away. But I'll be back on Friday. I think my next stream is going to be Friday because I have another really busy weekend. So I'm going to try and get one. I'm going to do Wednesday with Chris. Um, and then I'll do Friday for something else, possibly Alter Quest Part 2. Um, so if you do want more of that, let me know. This was, of course, uh, completely chosen by the patrons. A bunch of them had put it in wishful thinking. Um, and some of you mentioned in the comments as well, but every month the patrons get to vote on what we play. And they also get to just let me know in the in the wishful thinking box, you know, if there's something that's not in my connection they'd like to see. And I only got this because um, enough people had asked for it. So if you want to have a say in what we play, please consider supporting the show. But otherwise, just a big thanks to everyone who does choose to do that because without you guys, none of this stuff would be happening. And um, I'm really very grateful for that. So anyway, that's the end of Alter Quest for now, but we do have chapter two to go. So let me know. And uh, thanks everyone so much for joining. And thanks, Janet, for your help with the rules. That was super helpful. And uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Oh, yeah. And if you don't want to miss it, of course, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn, turn on the notifications, all that good stuff. Okay. And here's the credits for the patrons. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.